Uh, hello, we're back. Uh, Donna will be here in a minute. And um, this is part three. I should have put on there part three. I forgot to. On my other one, I, I listed Tuesday giving, uh, giving Tuesday two. And I forgot to put Giving Tuesday three because we have this three is segments. This three. We've been on here for <laughs> uh, six hours. We've been on for six hours. This is our seventh. We're in our seventh okay. hour. And Kareth is back. Oh, I'm so good. glad you came back, Kareth. Thank you. Uh, you're going to be able to hear Jordan pretty soon. He's going to, he said he'd call in at, uh, at um, 610. So in 10 minutes, he'll be calling in. And you'll be able to hear him. Oh, you can see our dog wagging his tail back there behind us. <laughs> uh, that little black fluffy thing that's that you saw, that was our dog. And um, So Pastor Jordan Hansen from Newport Mesa Church, um, who delivered a message on giving like I've never heard before. I mean, he was on fire, this guy. And um, it was an amazing message on giving. So he will be... Uh, coming on board here in a little bit and talking about what, you know, we know him pretty well. We, we actually have a, you know, some of the things we never mention is we, we like mentoring young pastors. And, oh, I better hook up here. Yeah, get us. Uh, I have to get back on our conference line. I'm going to let you take over and talk. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we, what we do is we have a conference line that we have, a fr freeconferencecall.com. And we actually started doing that five years ago no, no, on a monthly. Almost seven years ago. Seven years ago, <laughs> a monthly call. Time flies. And um, and so what we do is is we have people call this number, and if you if you want some prayer tonight, you can call this number, or you can just write it on uh, just text us on online. But Jordan's going to be calling this number, yeah. and then pretty soon I better. We have him. a. We put the microphone up to the phone, and and he's able to join us. You can hear him. You can't see him. I've tried, and and Facebook supposedly allows people to to split screen and do Facebook that way. So we have two screens, but I have not been able to make that work. Um, it's it might have something to do with with us using iPhone as opposed to an Android. It might have something to do with with um, uh, with this being a page and not an individual uh, situation. So anyway, we, we're bringing on all of our different guests and friends, and we've had an amazing list. Oh, my of, gosh. Of we've had, we should have been writing them all down. We've had at least, oh, gosh. A lot. And a lot. It's, it's, it's wonderful. So, so you can go and listen to the other words. others. They're all different. And uh, and they have powerful things to say, but uh, here on on Giving Tuesday, it was our goal, Don and I, to give what we can give, because that's the that's the message uh, of uh, that we have to to give what you can, and that's the giving of of Giving Tuesday. And so Don and I said we're going to give as much as we can. We're going to give nine hours. Mm -hmm. And so we've been on on since noon today. It is now not bad, six. huh? Not bad for nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All I did was I put a little lipstick on him and admit. Okay. Well, that was a nice, <laughs> nice little thing to do. But nine there. hours. Yeah, we've been yeah. here for how many? Six. Over six. So a little over six hours. So this is about you're telling them what it's about, right? Yeah. So. So here's what here's the first thing that everybody who who's here can give. You can share this message with others. You can go and find one of our memes or the little poster cards that we put on our Facebook, and you can share that on your Facebook page. You can share one of our videos. We have our daily videos, and you can share that. You can sign up, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please do that. That's huge. And when you subscribe, you can get alerts. There's a little bell on uh, on the, the side YouTube channel. of the channel. subscribe button. Once you put your name in there to subscribe. And if you do that, then you will get an email every time we post something on on YouTube, which is daily. And that daily devotional, you can all, all you have to do will come up in your email. All you have to do is hit click the on pi it. click on the picture that'll show up there. 
and it'll take you straight to the new video. It's 90 and, seconds long at the most. So and you have just, a 90 second daily right. devotional. So it's a really cool way to start the day. It really is. We start our day that way, even though it's his voice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I like it. Hey, it's the word of God. You know, it's not all it's all scripturally based, even though it's not in your face scripture on every single video, because we are also mostly a church to the unchurched because we want to we want to attract people to Jesus that don't know Jesus yet. So how do you do that? You reach people where they are, not where you want them to be, but where they are. And if you reach people with God's grace and love where they are, then you're going to find them. And where people are today, they're on the internet. They're on their smartphones. They're on their, I've got my laptop here in front of me with our um, control panel for our call if people want to call in. And, you know, that's what we're calling, what we do is we, it's felt needs evangelism is basically what we do every single day, five days a week and Sunday uh, church service. And then Saturday, we're usually working on posting the rest of the stuff but anyway we do take a day off we do one in seven but um you know we we love what we do we are called to do this we're pastors this isn't a this isn't a hobby this isn't a part-time thing this is a full-time calling and god put us put both our hearts you were called to be a pastor and ordained minister when you were a little boy god introduced me to you and we've been married 34 years so we've been in ministry together for 34 years and and we you know, couldn't do it without you. Yeah, we couldn't Seriously. do this without you. Oh, somebody's on there. Jordan. Jordan's on there. Pastor hey. Jordan Hansen. Oh, yay. Thank you for calling back. We got really, <laughs> really busy earlier, like a lot busier than we thought we'd be at. You know. Well, what's happening is, is things are happening in, in blotches. All of a sudden, <laughs> we have four or five people who want to call, and then we can't get fit, fit it in. So... Um, so, I totally understand. Well, I'm grateful to be on the on the line with you guys. Well, we love you. We love your church. This is um, Pastor Jordan Hansen. He's the um, lead or senior pastor of Newport Mesa Church, which we often attend, and our kids are members there. Christina, our daughter Christina, her husband Chad, and their two little children go there uh, weekly whenever they're in town. And we love your ministry. We love your message i've been talking all day long off and on she has um, i, I have she has about pastor <laughs> jordan's message on giving i think robert might be a little bit envious that i yes, keep saying I, it's I, the best message the best. On giving just, i've I'm, ever heard like yeah i'm feeling a little self-conscious no, about you this just now. you convicted well me. well hey robert is a preaching coach so you know <laughs> some some of the some of the uh, accolades have to go back to him Oh, well, that's a very well, sweet thing to you, say, Tom. but you were definitely inspired by the Holy Spirit, and he was alive and living, and he was taking over your whole body at church on Sunday because, honestly, you were just on fire, and I could tell those, it went beyond the words that you had prepared to say. I, I could tell. It was just like, it just came out of you and your passion and the way you delivered and and and. You know, I felt so, I felt so convicted about uh, just like the whole thing about finances and how we worry about them and how they can control us. And I mean, I don't know. I want Robert. I want Robert to talk for a while, but I want you to 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 tell us a couple of main points in your message. Yeah, I want you, people have been listening to me talk for the yeah. last six hours <laughs> and ten minutes. <laughs> and so we're bringing in people like yourself, Jordan, to to um, to just share um, why why Giving Tuesday, why give at all, why what what's the need to mm -hmm. to 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 tithe or to to make donations or or anything? Why? That is such a great question, um, and. It's easy to give um, and it be disconnected from the purpose for which God has, you know, given us the opportunity to do it. And I think if if you if you misunderstand why God asks us to give, it it really can create an even more disconnected relationship with Him. But by reconnecting giving to the purpose for which God has called us to it, 
which at the end of the day is to become more like him. And I think when you look at the big picture of giving and the big picture of generosity, and when you understand that there is not a stingy part of God, and it's our calling to become more like him, to reflect Mm -hmm. the imago Dei or the image of God in us that we've been created with, it only makes sense that we would become more generous as we get closer to who he is. That's part of the nature of love, is that love is giving. And um, and so I think, you know, with that end in mind, it makes sense that God would establish something like the tithe in the Old Testament only as a way to help us build those generosity muscles. Mm. Uh, so that as we flex, as we grow in that discipline, we can we can begin to speak that language that God speaks so fluently. He speaks generosity. That's the only language that he knows. And I think most of us, as we think about our own lives and all the different ways that he has blessed us, it's pretty obvious we we don't give anything to him that he needs. You know, we we receive. Oh, God... Yeah. It's just constant well, what would God do without my and, uh, without my hundred dollars? <laughs> I know <laughs> it's comical. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> I, you know, I tell people God doesn't He doesn't need anything from us. He wants something for us, right. and right what on. He wants for us is for us to become more like more like Christ, to become more like more like God. And we'll never be God, but until we really understand how to speak generosity we're so far from who his character is for us. And it's just one of those disciplines that, that helps us grow in our relationship with God because we're becoming more and more like him. Yes. I love it. You know, I was, one of the things I loved that you were talking about is God's math. And it gets into the Uh whole thing of, you know, we live in a three dimensional world, but God is so much bigger than that. And you talked about, the kind of math God does, and I talked a little bit earlier about how I didn't talk about God math. I, I mentioned, I said, I can't wait for Pastor Jordan to get on here. But one thing it it reminds me of is that God always gives us what we need, but not always what we want. In fact, a lot of times he doesn't give us what we want. But even if it's at the very last yeah. minute, he always gives us what we need. So what did you say about God math? You know, you said something. Well, you know. Life. I, I, I don't know if at first glance giving makes sense to people who don't understand what the ultimate purpose for it is. So I like to start with that general backdrop that mm-hmm. the discipline is giving, the discipline of giving is for us to become more like God himself, for mm-hmm. us to become more like Jesus. And at the end of the day, Jesus didn't give just 10% of himself. He literally gave his whole life, um, which at yeah. the start of Matthew or uh, Mark 12, you see the, the parable of the vineyard is that we truly are stewards and that all of everything that we own is actually God. Uh, and so the idea of us dying is the idea of us, uh, uh, of not being able to take anything with us and, and knowing that each of us will answer to God for, for the decisions that we've made, the resources that we've stewarded, the relationships that we've cultivated, you know, on and on. And so until you have that big backdrop of the purpose of generosity, the the discipline of giving and what it should be cultivating. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's hard to understand how God can multiply nothing. Uh, Mm -hmm. But when you take the best of what you have to offer and you multiply it by what God has to offer, (laughs) he becomes the infinite multiplier. Uh, You know, let's let's just say that, you know, what I have to offer is one or five or ten, you know, multiplied by 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 what I can offer, it, it's not ever going to be more than anything other than addition. But when you multiply that by what God has to offer, and when you sit back and think about what God has to offer, there's there's no there's no end to it. It's it's infinity. Like there is only abundance in His kingdom. He doesn't speak scarcity. And if there ever is scarcity in, in our life, it's because there are are other factors happening. You know, God may be trying to teach us to be more dependent on Him, or just like you said, there are other things that right. that factor into the the equation because God ultimately wants to grow his relationship with us and to have us become more like Christ. But God has no no limitations. Uh, I was sitting uh, in a a yacht down in Newport Beach and I was just thinking about, uh, we were having a meeting with some pastors and we were thinking about the homeless issue. Hmm. And I just felt like the Holy Spirit said, Jordan, look around at all these yachts. And I looked, looked around surrounding me in Newport Beach there are all these beautiful yachts and i heard the holy spirit say they're all mine right (laughs) exactly yes (laughs) exactly 
Wow. And how often do we pray with such a small idea of what God has available? And, you know, this isn't about name it, claim it. This is just the reality that God is all-powerful. He's all-knowing, that he owns everything. That all of everything that we see is his. All of the glorious riches and splendor in this universe are all extensions of who he is and what he has created. And that that is a, that can't be a small prayer. I think oftentimes our prayers are too small because we 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 have a limited understanding of who God is. And I think God wants to open up our minds to who He is, and that's part of the reason why He invites us to test Him in this idea of giving, because He's ready to open up the floodgates of heaven as we pray kingdom minded prayers for His kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. And when I think about heaven, I don't think of of a place that is stingy or is going to be lacking in beauty or it's going to be a place of abundance, a place where there is no end to his goodness and his riches and his glory. And we get to taste a little bit about a little bit of that here on earth. And that's, that's what he wants for us. Oh, I love it. You know, I used to, I used to play God math with my, with my kids when they were really little. Mm-hmm. And, and here's how the God math works. What's, and and they would always get the right answer. <laughs> I'd say, what is 200 times zero? And they knew the answer. Zero! And I'd say, what's 558,652 times zero? I'd go, zero! <laughs> and I'd say, anything times zero is still zero. But if you add one to the equation, so if you go even zero times God is still zero. But if you add one times God and nobody can count the number. And that's the way God is. That's good. And that's the way God is. It's it's that God math. And and I'm just I'm just uh, just think your message is is fabulous that uh that uh we have a little bit of faith and and i think your scripture passage was was on the widow's might is that right yes that's it at the end of chapter 12 of of uh, the book of mark and tell us a little bit about the widow's might well you know in that day a widow's might was not worth a lot and uh the text tells us that that uh, it was two copper coins, which is interesting that that detail is there because she could have kept one of those copper coins to herself. Mm-hmm. But we're, we're not even talking about yeah. a day's wage. I mean, she we're talking everything. about such a small portion. Yeah. And it was all that she had to live on. Uh, and the, the big idea of the passage is just that the trust that would have been required of this widow to, to give her very last Two, uh, coins is just incredible uh, I think it was the famous theologian Bob Marley who said some people are so poor that all they have to give is money yeah. and you know that wasn't this widow I mean sh- yeah. her heart was fully dependent on the Lord and you know in this day if you were a widow you didn't have a whole lot of hope or, or prospects mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, she knew where her provision was coming from that's what giving sacrificially indicates it's a reflection that you are trusting the Lord and certainly we have to you know use wisdom and 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 be good stewards of our finances but again you know when we think of the discipline of giving and what it should be cultivating in our heart it shouldn't be cultivating pride it shouldn't be cultivating hey everyone look at me it really should be cultivating God's kingdom and our dependence on God to provide for us on this earth and the idea of giving a tithe or giving your first fruits really is connected to that. It's that I'm going to give out of the first portion of what God has given to me because I know who controls and provides for my future. And from the very beginning, we see that there is that precedent that is set. But the bigger picture of our existence is that everything that we have that we're experiencing on this earth is because God has been so incredibly generous to us. He loves us and he, he, he wants us to experience the abundance of his kingdom. 
and it's not all financial, you know. So, mm-hmm. so much of so much of the of the of the harvest that God wants to bring into our lives, it, it could be relational, it could be in our career, it could be in our spiritual life, in our intimacy with God. And certainly, that is the greatest gift that we could receive when we give is just that the trust that we have in God increases and it grows. And you know what? There's just nothing more powerful than the kind of relationship with God that is unshakable, that even when life storms come, you are anchored because you know that God has provided in the past, that God is providing for me in the present, and that God will provide for me in the future. I may not always know who's name is going to be on the paycheck that, that is given to me or how I'm going to earn my living, but I know that God's looking after me and he's going to take care of me and that everything that he's given to me on this side of heaven is a way for me to, to be a conduit of his grace on this earth so that they could know his goodness and his love too. I love it. That's beautiful. And that, you know what, and as you were talking, it's, you reminded me of what convicted me when you were preaching on Sunday and that is that word trust. It's not so much about the, the widow that gave it all, but it's why she did it, how she was able to give it, right? She was able to do that because it showed that she had 100% or more trust in the Lord and his goodness and his promises. And so I think when you were speaking about this on Sunday, you know how when people listen to a message, when people listen to anybody talk, we all, you know, we, we hear things differently, we see things differently. Um, each individual that's the way God made us but when you talked about that trust that's what really got me because I'm like man do I really trust that God's going to continue to provide for us in our ministry and what we do day in and day out you know full time without uh, the umbrella of a church to help us with you know fundraising or staff members whatever it is it's like do I really trust oh yeah duh you know that's what this whole giving thing's about that's what this whole giving of yourself and ministry is about. It's it's knowing, yeah. first of all, right, that you're on the right path, that you're you're following God's calling. But then it's a trust thing. Like, do I trust God enough to keep moving forward? And with our ministry in particular, Jordan, the guy that's helping us post our videos and has helped us come up with a lot of what we've done in the last few months said, this is a steep, steep climb, this the climb, this internet mm-hmm. stuff. It's a steep climb, but yeah. you got to believe, and he's a pastor too, and he says, you got to trust God, you got to trust God, you got to just keep going and keep going because what you're doing is making a difference. And that's where, you know, you were talking about, it's not always about financing, it's a, finances, it's about the abundance that God is going to continue to give you and that, with, you know, with what yeah. you give, you're going to get back. It could be in relationships, it could be in ministry, it could be in uh, you know your your relationship with him and the blessings there. It's just, it's just uh, so that whole trust thing. And and basically, if we don't trust, then we're living in fear, and that's the opposite of God yeah. because God is love, and love is the opposite of fear. So I just I just obviously I could go on and on about your sermon. I'm gonna have to. I'm going to have to listen to it again. And I want to share it with somebody. My best friend came over today, and I started talking her ear out. Off, and I said, you got to listen to this, and you got to listen to this message I'm giving. And So anyway, I want to get a copy of that, okay? So you'll, I suppose you'll post that on your... Uh, you post yeah, the first service, though, right? Yeah, it should, it, should, uh, it should already be posted. Okay, so okay. I... I uh, one of my... One of my favorite life verses is just John ten ten, where Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Mm-hmm. And I just come back to that over and over and over again. And I think about the different areas of my life where Christ wants to bring uh, life. And, and the bridge to that is trusting God. And it's so wow. easy to try to make life work in the way that you think it needs to work. <laughs> yeah. But you got to remember the context in which Jesus was observing these giving patterns. He was two days away. He was a couple days away from dying on the cross. And when it when I think of that word trust, one of the images that comes into my mind is the image of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he prays, "Not my will, but yours be done." And one of the 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 counterintuitive ideas of the kingdom is that to find life, you actually have to give your life up. And I think giving gives us a small opportunity to practice that. Like, I'm going to give up what this money, which which 
had the had the 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 false connotation of control in my life. I mean, the more money you have, the more you can control certain things. And I think the key is is just that attitude of trust as you give. And I think oftentimes even people will will assume that they'll read a passage like this widow and say, well, you have to be poor to be able to experience that kind of trust. But I don't think that's the case at all. I think what the critical piece is what our heart is doing as we give. Oh, as I not? give, yeah, as I bless, right as I serve, am I trusting God for this season, for this day, for this hour? And honestly, I, as a pastor, I am praying for more millionaires, more billionaires, more yeah. people with these ideas and who live like, with this kind of kingdom imperative because I know that they're going to trust God as God leads them to give towards this ministry or towards this church or towards this initiative. And we need more people who trust God like that, where money doesn't control them, but they control the resources that God is placing in their lives. And I think that is where the issue is. That's the issue that the, that the rich young ruler had, is that he had lots of fame and money, and but those things controlled him to the point where he couldn't say yes to God. And it requires trust to say yes to God. And there are those moments where God gives us this, this idea or desire to give more than maybe we're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And it's in those faith-pushing moments where that trust is cultivated, and we go to a new level of faith. And, I, I, you know, as we become more like Christ, it just can't happen without trust. We've got to hold the shepherd's hand if we ever want to experience the green grass and the still waters mm-hmm. and ultimately the restoration of our souls. It happens through our relationship with a God who loves us more than we even know or can imagine. Wow. That's amazing. I have to say something I noticed in listening to you talk where I'm not looking at you. We were we had Bobby on a little bit earlier, our son Bobby, for those of you listening that, that may not may or may not know who he is. He's a pastor also. But the most interesting thing is, okay, so we had Bobby on, and then earlier I was talking to Anthony, our youngest son. I think you may have met him. He's he just turned thirty one. He's a year and a half younger than Christina, who belongs to your church. But I talked to Anthony, and he was talking about what he does. He's getting ready to graduate with a doctor of chiropractic. And he was just going on and on, and he wanted to talk to me for like an hour. It was so cool to have a 31-year-old son want to talk to mom, right? And we were kind of, we were kind of getting ready for this whole thing. So I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. So I'm like, I'm listening to him. Uh, but anyway, my point is I listened to him. Then Bobby called in, and he's passionate about his ministry. And listening to you, it's so interesting. There's like a... And Christina said this There's before. An you remind you remind her of her brother a little bit, and I think she was talking about Bobby. But what I because he's a pastor. But what I was going to say to Bobby earlier when he was talking, you sound like Anthony. So what I'm saying, Jordan, is you could be one of our sons because all three of you guys. <laughs> well, are, we'll, I we'll think that's a huge one of compliment. Our sons. It's seriously like Anthony sounded like Bobby, and now listening to you, and it's not what you said. It's how you said it. It's with the conviction and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life that's dwelling within you that is so obvious because when you talk, people feel it. People listen because it's it's real. It's real life. It's real stuff. It's about Jesus, our Savior, uh, the person that we owe our lives to, that we owe the quality of our lives to for sure. And I, it's like I had to say that. I mean, Robert knows me if it, if I think it, it comes out, typically. I've, yeah. I've trained myself to be yeah, a little she... more careful these days. But that was a compliment. I always like to compliment people and tell them, uh, you know, how much they mean to me. So anyway, you mean a lot to us. Um, your wife, your beautiful wife, um, means a lot to us. And, and now you have two babies. You have a little girl and a little baby boy. And uh, we, yeah. think, we think a lot of your whole family. And so thank you for being there for our family and being one of our pastors. We appreciate it. Well, we love you guys, and uh, we're grateful for. And uh, by the way, I received that. I'll just. I'm a. I'm an adopted chewer. I'll take yes. it. Yes. Oh, there we go. You yeah. are. We respect you yep. both and honor you both, and are just so grateful to be in relationship with you, and grateful for your influence, not just here in Orange County, but around the globe. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to be praying with you guys that you reach your goals and yeah. investing in 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 what you're doing. And we're just so so proud in a, in a positive, godly way of what God has accomplished through you. And honestly, it's just inspiring to, 
to see what you've gone through and to, you know, just what life has thrown your way and how you are just navigating it. And uh, it just, it feels, I just feel like the words that are in my head are, it is good, you know, from creation, from Genesis 1. Yeah. I just yeah. feel like God is so proud of both of you. Thank well, you. Thank good. You. So nice. Thank, thank you. you, Jordan. Donna, would you have a prayer for Jordan a minute yes, before please. he leaves? Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jordan, for his ministry, for his um, partnership with his wife, Tara, and their incredible team of people at their church, Newport Mesa and Costa Mesa. Lord, thank you that you called him years ago to to preach the truth, to preach your word, to to inspire people with hope and, and the real joy found in knowing you, Lord Jesus. Um, I pray right now that you would continue to bless him and his family with health, surround them with uh, protection at all times, Lord. Um, help him continue to, to just espouse your message to as many people as he can. And, and thank you, thank you that he is an important part of our life and that he continues to, to follow you, Lord Jesus. We love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jordan, for calling. Amen. We appreciate love it. Love you guys. Thank you. We love you too. Okay, talk to you we soon. Do. Okay, see you soon. Bye. God bless. Bye. Bye. Hi, we want to just remind you that there's several ways to donate to this ministry. Uh, our goal for 2019 is to, or our budget for 2019 is $214,000. That's what it's going to require for us to to continue our ministry in its current form. But for that $214,000, this is what we do. 324 videos. And That's this a, isn't one of them, by the way. No, no, this no, doesn't count. No. This doesn't count. This is no. just a freebie. So anyway, no. <laughs> but, but, but we're putting out 260 daily devotionals. We're putting out uh, 54 um, Sunday Sunday services specifically for uh, Facebook Live and for mm -hmm. uh, YouTube and um, and it's it's it, it's unique. We're creating our we're creating an international church with no walls, without walls, and that's why we do almost everything we do outside. We couldn't do this outside because we have to have everything plugged in. Yeah. We would have been dead, dead a long time I'm ago. Our batteries just Speaking of which, I'm surprised. The phone's been working okay and the internet today. Yeah. Miracle. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah. So, God's good. Um, so, so, we do all of that plus all of our traveling. Um, uh, maintaining the offices here and in Mexico. We will, we will be, in 2018, we went to several different uh, countries around the world. We went to Uganda. We went to the Philippines. We went to, uh, to Korea. We went to, oh, we forgot, Indonesia. We went, that was the year before. Was that the year before? Okay. <laughs> so, so Ministry work in all these places. And so it's been where fantastic. God leads us in 2019 is yet to be determined. That's right. But if God calls us someplace, and, and I've had a... Uh, Nigeria has been coming up. I, we may I end up going to ni Nigeria over over. In, in in 2019. That will come out of this budget. That's included in the $214,000 that we need. And and I, all the and all the traveling we do domestically because Robert still marries and baptizes and buries and when people call us like we were on the phone for quite a while with our good friend in Florida we go and visit her. If she needs us to come there, we fly there. We have great airline miles with, again, this isn't a, a commercial for Southwest Airlines, but they've been matter. fantastic. Just, yeah. So we fly for free, basically. And so that's why if anybody needs us, we're there. We fly there. We're, we go to pray with people. We visit people in the hospital. Um, and that's what we do, full-time ministry. And that's what God's, God's called us to do. And we're convinced that we're doing what he wants us to do so so there are several ways you can give one way is to just simply hit the donation button at the top of this page that works and uh, we need these funds in order to 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 do this ministry we don't have the financial means to to do, to do it ourselves uh, it's just not there we're not we haven't been blessed in that way God has chosen to bless us in other ways but that's not one of them right now mm -hmm. <laughs> 
and, uh, and if he had, then I wouldn't be doing this, and that's probably why he hasn't, because he wants me doing this. And, and so we are here giving ourselves during this nine hours to, to pray for anybody who needs prayer. If you need prayer, just text us on this, on this live feed, and we'll get your prayer. If you want to call us, you can call us. Here's the number to call right here you can call us if you want to do that and you can ask for prayer and we can and we will do it that's six four one seven one five three eight six five and the and what will happen is you'll be prompted to put in your code and when the when that prompt comes up you put in the code number of six four two eight four eight and the pound sign and with that you'll be on live with us and you can you can ask for prayer and we'll pray for you You heard donna pray for jordan just a minute ago um so you can do that if you like sending checks in the mail uh that works as well please do not send cash in the mail uh, i'm afraid it won't get here but uh, if you want to send a check in the mail here's the address it's robert Schuler ministries 2128 bay point drive Newport Beach, California, 92660. That's Robert Schuler Ministries, 2128 Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. And I believe all of this information is available on our Facebook, um, Facebook page. You'll see it there. Uh, if you scroll down through our feed, You'll, you'll see all of that information there. I think Donna just wrote some on as well. And so again, this is Giving Tuesday, and we want you to know that Donna and I are giving to you in every way we can. So we've had some amazing guests today. I think we've had close to 20 people call in and, think so. and yeah. uh, talk with us. And, and you just heard Jordan, what, a, what a, an amazing young man he is. Uh, I have some of my other friends who have told me they're going to call in tonight and uh, so I expect them to be calling in shortly but um, we have we have another uh, two hours and 20 minutes left before we have to say goodbye for the night and so please pray for us that our voices so we can go pass out no yeah just kidding. <laughs> no. so our, well well, well kind of well we want to make sure that our voices uh, last for another two two hours and 20 minutes Mm -hmm. um, because this is the first time we've done anything like this, we didn't know what we were getting into. I know Donna woke up and she was, she was grumpy. a little. That's grumpy. Uh, I didn't think you were grumpy. Oh. I thought you were a nervous. little nervous. You were a little stressed. I just said we've never done anything like this. You know, first of all, to have to, you know, ask people. It's humbling enough to have to ask people and write people letters and tell them about our ministry every year and ask them to give to us and then to go on giving tuesday when you know there's so many good charities amazing charities so you know my answer to that is just give where god's called you to give if he calls you to give to this ministry please by all means if he calls you to give to um some other nonprofit or some other church absolutely i mean positively this is not about um this is not about us, like Jordan said, Pastor Jordan was saying. It's about giving. It's about your heart. It's about trusting God and knowing that you're not in control of your finances and trusting that by giving, you'll receive doubly back in one way or another, not necessarily financially, but you will definitely get a blessing in your life. And the fact is that if you donate to this ministry um, and you do not feel like you've been blessed by giving to this ministry blessed in one way in, in one way shape or form uh, we call it the 90-day challenge uh, the 90-day challenge is okay Lord here's my here's my gift to you and you've promised that if I give that I will receive a blessing from you and if you don't receive a blessing and not necessarily a financial blessing because mm -hmm. most people need something more than they need finances mm -hmm. uh, they need a, a, a renewal of their spirit they need r their relationships they need it could be a, a host of different things they need to be freed from from addictions but here's the promise i make if you when you 
sign that commitment. That's day one. And you take this 90-day challenge and you put God to the test. And in 90 days from now, if you are not more blessed in 90 days from now than you feel right now, if, you're not, if you don't feel that blessing, I'll give you your money back. Because uh, it, it's, it's, it's about you receiving the blessings that God has for you. And uh, so I want you to feel free to, to, to support this ministry and realize that the money you give to this ministry will go a very, very long way. Jamie Osborne is, is listening to us. And hey, Jamie, if you can call in, that'd be awesome. I want people to hear you again. He called the first hour. He called it, I think it was 1230 or something like that. And he was has that, that long ago. This day has really flown by. I know. Gosh, it was twelve thirty, and and he has a way of communicating what this mm-hmm. ministry does in in a beautiful, wonderful way. And I'd love for him to be able to have one more opportunity. What what, what are you trying to do there? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> There's, I have to touch the screen once in a while and see so who's. Yeah. So so anyway, if if that's a possibility, you know how to how to reach us. You can call me directly on my line. Or you can call the, the what is the number? The, the conference line? The oh, conference oh, line, either one. They don't. Oh, okay. So here's our conference Here's our conference line if you want some prayer. If you want to talk with us, it's 641-751-3865. And then when prompted, you have to put in the, the code 642-848 and the pound sign. But... Um, but what we have been doing as a result of this ministry is being able to reach people with the good news of Jesus Christ at a very, very reasonable price. For two cents, we can reach somebody with the good news. This ministry is going out around the world. We, In the first hour alone, we had people from Italy, from Spain, from Germany, from and, Germany the and the Netherlands. And Mexico. Those are the ones we know about. Yeah. And there's a lot of people on here that we don't know about. Tonight, we've had people, again, around the globe. And, and so this ministry is reaching out to touch people with the good news of Jesus Christ. So anyway, uh, we have several people who are planning on calling in. Not too many, not too many uh, minutes from now. I expect to call at in. Uh, let me see. Let me go through my list. What's that? No, just look at the screen to see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. Oh, Peter! You know what? Is Peter on? Peter's on there. We didn't see him. Peter, you've been. You called earlier. Hello. Pe- Peter, hi. Hi, John. How are you? I saw you waiting patiently earlier, and we had like four or five calls in the queue, and we uh, several people hung up because we just didn't couldn't get to everybody because everybody called in and they call in in batches for some reason. Yeah. So now we've got and two we saw, people Hi, on right Peter. now. How are you? Well, I'm doing fine. How are you, are you and doing? Robert? We're doing good. Hey, I still have a little bit of your delicious salad dressing left, but. You're going to have to mail me some more when we're out of that salad dressing. Well, here, here's an interesting <laughs> well, you thing. Use this, use this collar and I'll send you some off. Okay. Uh, here's an interesting <laughs> thing, Peter. We've had a lot of guests on today talking about how they give. And one of the one of the illustrations that one of our guests used was, if you're a chef, you can find a way to to know. to give of your, your services. And I immediately thought... That's Peter Quiglia. He invited us over for dinner and made us this most amazing meal. Yes, and, uh, amazing Italian meal. And I already, of course, used your marinara sauce you sent home with us. Which yeah, was, that lasted about... I used, I used it a couple times. I took it, I froze it, no, and took half of it out, used it, and took another half out and used it. And wow, delicious. So you are quite, quite oh, the that's... chef. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I'm glad you folks enjoy that. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so Peter, we, we want. I just, to, I, yeah. just wanted, I just wanted to call. I haven't done much for your ministry, but I just uh, wanted to do a testament as to what your ministry has done for me. Thank you. And uh, I, I just uh, been dealing with stage four cancer, mm-hmm. so next. 
throat and neck cancer. And with the prayers of of you folks and everyone that's affiliated and, and part of the the uh, ministry that you have, people from around the world, all their prayers and best wishes. Um, you have brought me through, and God has done miraculous miracles with me. Mm-hmm. I was told uh, they weren't expecting me to get off the table, yeah. and every every day I'm, I'm I'm getting better. I'm being healed every day, and mm-hmm. it's because of all your prayers, everyone in your uh, ministry, all the people around the world that listen to you that pray for me uh people i don't even know i just wanted to thank you all so much well thank you peter and you know what it was wonderful being able to visit you and meet you in person after all these years um we were we actually had a man on earlier chris widener who's a motivational speaker that had he was one of the gentlemen that invited robert to phoenix and because of that we called you up and we were able to go over and visit you. And all we wanted to do was just come over and pray with you. And instead you said, no, let me make you dinner. And that was such a special night. You treated us like the, like we were alone in a gourmet restaurant that you, we were your most prized um, guests in your gourmet restaurant and I know you used to be a restaurateur and, and a chef and uh, we just felt so spoiled you know that I actually wrote a blog about that evening and you can you can read it you can read it on uh, actually it's on Facebook now and it's on Robert Schuler Ministries drschuler.org I wrote a blog about that night because it meant so much to us and you you taught you can teach so many people on how you can you know, you can look up and you can look to God and you can be positive and you can have hope even even when you don't feel like it, you know, even when you don't feel like it. And you weren't feeling all that great that night. And yet you, you waited on us hand and foot. You were a gracious host and we will be forever thankful for that evening, forever. Well, I, that was a, a very special evening for me also. Uh, uh, I was so so thankful and grateful that I finally got to meet you and Robert and, and uh, I, God blessed me with just a beautiful beautiful evening with you folks and I just wish that the time was a stood still mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you know I definitely uh, uh, look forward to uh, another time coming very soon that we can get together and hopefully have more time together us too thank you thank you peter thank you very much well, you yeah. appreciate it oh you're welcome robert okay. and uh, god bless you both yeah. and your ministry thank you. and uh, i know there's people waiting on the line here so i don't want to be a hog and take up the whole time no, right okay. here so no, it's okay you're terrific we love yeah. you Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Hey, Peter, um, before you go, can we have a prayer with you? Oh, I love that. Thank dear, you so much. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for Peter that uh, you'll continue to bring healing into his body, that the cancer will be completely eradicated, mm-hmm. that he'll get a, his next report will be 100% clean, that the cancer they that they didn't think would go away is gone, that, uh, that he can expect to live a long time, and 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 many more years in this life and so we pray oh lord right now for this in your son's name amen 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 peter good to amen. talk to you thank you so much you're very thank well. you so much uh, okay you folks have a great evening i know you've been on the phone for many hours uh, i'll wait a day or two and i'd like to give you a call robert so we can talk okay okay very good we'll do that you have a good night. Oh, okay. Bye. Talk to you. Soon. Awesome. God bless. God bless. God bless you. Bye-bye. He is blessing you too. So, who else do we have on there? Hi there, uh, with Jamie. No. Oh, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. How are you doing? Well, I am fine. It is nine fifty-one p.m. Eastern <laughs> time. Uh, so, so we're uh, we only we're. Have two uh, hours. In the middle of this marathon, right along with you, I, I, 
I'm impressed with uh, you folks look. You look just as fresh now as you did back <laughs> when you started. Yeah. So fresh. So, so I can't trust you anymore. No. <laughs> no. no, we feel good. We feel you good. Know, this isn't, you know, this is not a bad thing to do. It's like, this is what God wanted us to do. We're on here and uh, we've had amazing conversations with people. Amazing, you know, all day long. Pastors and friends and people have brought up little things that they said, you know, that we did for them years ago that we didn't even remember, you know? So it's nice. It's really nice. It's affirming. Well, you know, one of the things one of the things I was thinking about as as I've heard all these stories uh, throughout the day, you know, as people have have called in and they've yeah. talked about the very personal ways that you have ministered to them. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of times people think that it's just you know, it's just you record a message and poof, it goes out mm-hmm. and, and that's it. That's all you do. But it, that's not the way it works at all. People are contacting you all the time. Mm-hmm. They're asking you for prayer, literally from all over the world. Mm-hmm. And, and I know that you spend many hours, many hours every day individually contacting people and answering all the all the messages that come in and, and that sort of thing. If, if people could only see what happens behind the scenes mm-hmm. every day, um, I I think they would they would understand just what an important role this ministry plays. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Well, you know, one of the unique things about our ministry, as you've pointed out in the past, is that um, we're, we're not supported by a, a, a local church. This is our church. Uh, that the people who participate in whatever we're doing is part of our fellowship. And so it's pretty unique. I don't know of, uh, I think you said you don't know of another ministry doing this. Not exactly, no. Not not the way you're doing it. And I think, you know, as, as a pastor myself, I think sometimes those of us who are, who are churched people, you know, we, we tend to think that, that everybody goes to church, but that's really not the case. You know, where we are right now in America is that most people, on any given Sunday, do not go to church. Um, and, you know, what we have to do is we have to meet them where they are and reach them where they are, because particularly when we look at the millennial generation and that sort of thing, you know, they're just not they're just not responding to the institutionalized church that so many of us love and, and have, have been a part of uh, for so many years. And so it takes somebody to come along and stand in that gap and say, okay, we're here, and uh, we're here, and we will meet you where you are. We will we will be the church together in whatever format we need to be the church together in order to accomplish God's purposes. And uh, and so it isn't easy. You know, it, it, what, you're, what you're doing in your ministry is not an easy ministry. It would, in many ways, be easier to go just build a single building in a single city and and preach to the same group of people every week. But, but what you're called to do and what you're doing so well is is to spread out far and wide and to 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 develop a, a congregation of people across uh, many stratas of society and many cultures. And and it's it's really exciting to see because uh, I think it I think your your congregation probably looks a lot more like heaven than mine does. <laughs> because, because it's so well, it's, it's so many un- different people from so many different places. It's ethnically mixed, mm-hmm. uh, clearly. It's um, economically mixed, clearly. It's um, so you definitely have it's it's culturally mixed. So I think there's it'd be very hard to get one to get a, a ministry or a church that that is that is um, less mixed than this one, <laughs> you might say. And that's the key, that's what the body of Christ is looks like. It looks like every everybody you could possibly imagine, from rich to poor, from black to white, uh, every color in between, every economic strata in between. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's it's a representation of humanity 
um, and um, and and not making people not when people become part of that that family it doesn't make them better than everybody else it just makes them better than they would be if they weren't part of that family right and um, so this is God's family one family under God uh, united with the blood of Jesus and forgiven in 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 by his grace and uh, so that's what this is all about so you know, I think a lot of times I think a lot of times people don't really understand when you do this type of ministry and mm-hmm. and you know, you're you're one to many that, that it can be a very lonely existence sometimes mm-hmm. you know when when you're you're there and you know it's it's easier when you can you can see people and you can touch people and that sort of thing but when when you're dealing with somebody on the other side of the world um, and you and you can't reach out and touch them. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, then it's, it's harder. It's a, it, what you're called to is a much harder type of ministry. It's more difficult. Uh, it's it's sometimes um, it, you know it, it's sometimes uh, I think all of us we get we get affirmation back from the people that we're we're meeting every day and that sort of thing. And you're doing plenty of that, but but still. You know, people need to pray for you. They need to pray yes, for please, this please. ministry, yeah, please. <laughs> because because what you're tr- what you're doing and, and doing so well, and the Lord is blessing, is not easy. You know, I like to tell people that the kingdom does not advance easily. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not it's it's sometimes it's sometimes like having a you know a, a toothpick in a in a glacier. You know, and you get up in the morning, you just take your little toothpick, and you, you know, you just Exactly. You know, pounding away at, at the glacier, <laughs> you know, but but it all matters, you know. The other thing I was thinking about today is I've, I've listened to so many people uh, call in, and is the the kind of enduring value of of your family's legacy in ministry when we when we really talk about this this idea of positivity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and 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 you've brought that to to ministry in your your unique way and in your unique style. Your 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 dad did that. Your son is now doing that. And I don't know that there's ever been a time in our history where we've needed that particular message more than now, um, because we're so divided, and, and it's just. You know, we we need positivity. We need to um, we need to realize that that there's real hope and there's real purpose in life. And so many people are on antidepressants and you know, just dealing with anxiety at, at historic levels and things like that. And so you, you your your ministry definitely is, is filling a particular role. Of course, we know that we're all part of the body of Christ, one body, many parts, and, and that's an important part of the body that, that you're. You're fulfilling. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Jamie. I appreciate that very much, and uh, I appreciate uh, all you all you're doing for our ministry uh, in sure helping. Do. Yeah, helping us create create this, helping us with um, hopefully creating some kind of so, uh, solution for our divided nation. I know it's too early to talk about that. But we have some plans and some thoughts about what we can do to bring reconciliation to our nation, and uh, um, and again, these are things that that I believe we have the potential to do, and and we're gonna do we're gonna do something in that regard. But uh, it starts it all starts with us being able to make our meet our budget for for 2019. And uh, that budget is two hundred and fourteen thousand uh, dollars. We have pledges for for almost half of that, so we still have a long ways to go. And and without it, we can't we can't continue to produce all these videos. Uh, we can't continue to to do what we've been doing. We have to cut back. Uh, we don't want to cut back. We want to be available. We want to reach out. We want to do what we've been doing. We want to meet with you. We want to pray with you. We want to 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 bring reconciliation to our nation. 
we want uh, we want to proclaim the good news of Jesus around the world to everybody and we're going to do everything humanly possible to do that uh, but the fact is we just cannot do it without you and without you it will not succeed so anything you can do to help us financially will be greatly appreciated uh, to, to, to donate to our ministry you can go to the top of the page at, on Facebook and hit the donate button and follow the prompts there if you like the old fashioned way and want to send a check that works for that works as well as anything here's the address it's Robert Schuler Ministries 2128 Bay Point Drive Newport Beach California 92660 again that's 2128 Bay Point Drive Newport Beach California 92660 mm -hmm. and uh, we have text giving as well and to text give here's the information so you simply text the letters RSM to this phone number 360-900-1338 again you simply text these these letters RSM which stands for Robert Schuller Ministries mm -hmm. and you text it to 360-900-1338 so um, those are those are some of the ways that you can give financially. If it's a, if you're not in a position to be able to give financially, there are other ways you can give. And here is one way you can give: is share this message. Uh, you're on Facebook. You know how to share a message. We have not this exact message. No, not you don't. No, no, <laughs> no. What you need to do is is find something in our Facebook feed that that resonates with you and and with people on on your on, and your friends and then share it with them uh it, one of our blogs on our website at drschuler.org if there's something there that's meaningful share it with on your facebook page mm -hmm. so you can share you can like you can subscribe to our youtube channel all of this makes a positive impact on this ministry financially literally it literally it has impact on us financially when we reach the thousand um, uh, subscribers on on YouTube it puts us at a different level and 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 everything works better uh, it's hard to explain maybe Jamie can explain it better than I can but it works and so anyway all of that is helpful and will make a difference. Trust me. Mm -hmm. you know, there's one thing uh, I think you should also do, uh, and and that's give people your your email address. Mm -hmm. So there there might be somebody out there listening who says, you know what, I would love to give, but this time of year, mm -hmm. Christmas season, I'm just I'm stretched, I'm tapped, I can't do it. Yeah. And so maybe you would maybe you'd like to email the ministry and say. I want to make a pledge, but I, I want to do it starting in January. That's fine. Terrific. You know, they're, they're, you can definitely contact the ministry if you can't do it today, but you want to do it. If you if you feel the Lord's leading you to do it, go ahead and make the commitment today. Yes. Make the commitment right now and and simply start it in a month or, or, or at some point. But when you when you make it tangible and you and you write the ministry and you say, I've been blessed by this. I want to be a blessing to other people. I want to just say right now and raise my hand. I want to be a partner for this ministry. So maybe you're not in a position to click the button and, and literally make a contribution today, but you want to be a partner. Go ahead and contact the ministry and 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 say, you know, I I want to be on the team. Let's start let's start working toward that um, because it, it makes a difference and and and. You know, I know that there's somebody out there that the Lord's speaking to that that that's really being torn. They're they're being torn between what they feel like are their obligations this month and mm -hmm. you know, what wanting to, to follow God. And so um, so uh, give them your email address and and that way, you know, they can they can contact you that way if, if they want to want to make a future pledge as well. Absolutely. 
absolutely. Absolutely. absolutely. Do you want to give them our... Sure. Um, you can reach Robert or myself um, just simply uh, by email. It's Robert at Schuler Ministries dot org. That's the email address. Or if you want to reach me, Donna at Schuler Ministries dot org. That's probably the best uh, emails. Um, we have several of them, but that's the easiest one. So Robert at Schuler Ministries dot org. Donna at Schuler Ministries dot org. And uh, we take prayer requests that way too. So thank you for that suggestion, Jamie. Like I said, maybe there's people out there that uh, can't give on Giving Tuesday, but they've liked something about, you know, maybe it's been years of, of watching our ministry or years of supporting our ministry or just knowing, you know, reading Robert's books, whatever. You know, maybe they've seen us speak at a church out of the country somewhere. Maybe there's people that want to give, but they can't give today, but they want to make a pledge. And so if you email us, um, Gosh, no amount is too small, no amount is too big. I mean, we said earlier, this um, these dollars go a long way. Two cents, right, Jamie? Two cents to reach a person for the first time online with the, the love and the grace found through knowing Jesus Christ. And so we're taking this globally. We've been global our whole ministry, but this is a whole new thing. You know, it's like Robert's dad used to say, find a need and fill it. Well, today the needs are online. Mm -hmm. People are on their smartphone. This is their computer. I've got my laptop here too. People have desktop. People have tablets. They have all kinds of things, but that's where they go when they are desperate. That's when they where they go when they're sitting out in the parking lot after they've gotten it a cancer diagnosis at the doctor. They sit out there and they Google cancer. What do we do? Or, you know, and hopefully our ministry comes up. That's what we're working on. We're working on writing something. And Jamie, you tagged this, you, you coined this. It's called Felt Needs Evangelism, right? And I love that because we're having to, we, you know, based on what people Google, we know what people's needs are. And so there's a lot of negative stuff on the internet. We're not going to get that to go away. But what we can do is we can do whatever's in our power to dilute the negative with the positive news of Jesus Christ. And the fact is that no matter what kind of diagnosis you've been given, no matter what kind of bad news you've been given about your children, or no matter how many years you've been addicted, I don't, I don't care what challenge you have today that you can get through it with the power of God because he's bigger than any problem. He can fix anything. There's things called miracles that still happen every single day. They didn't just happen in the Bible. And that's where we're, what we're doing. We're meeting people in their dark valleys, in their, their dark night of the soul, if you will. We're, we're, we're meeting them where they are. We're not meeting them where they aren't. We're meeting them back to what Robert's dad said. Find a need and fill it. There's a lot of needs out there. So we work seven days a week trying to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to the world, and we're doing it online. And um, do you know what Angie is holding on the phone? Let's let's talk to let's talk to ah, Angie. Jamie, thank you for your for your wisdom. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. So God bless much. you, folks. Have a great night. Yes, you too. God's blessing you too. Angie. Angie Wyatt. Hi there. How are you? Hi. Thank you for calling in. Thank you so much. Really nice of you to do that. We've been sitting here now uh, for over seven hours for our give a -thon. In fact, my, my rear end's getting a little bit. Yeah, I'm starting to get sore. Yeah. I'm starting to get quiet. You Donna, know you don't quiet. sit still for seven minutes. No, I don't this know how you've done it. This is hard for me. Really yeah. Hard. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. Seven, Hyperactive yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. But, well, um, I'm hoping my call didn't interrupt Jamie. Oh, that's okay. No. Well, we'll get him back if we need to. But uh, he's, that's his second time he's been on, which yeah. is really a, 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 an honor to have him on this this many times. But I, I got your text message, and I didn't want to keep you holding. I know as I, I, here's my, my young mothers have the top priority, right. period. Right. There's, Thank you. Period. <laughs> young mothers get first choice. Uh, it, when they can get a, they get a break. They get a break, and it's not for very long. And it's just a matter of minutes. And one of the kids are going to start making some noise or demanding or needing something. Hopefully, they're in bed. And, I'm gonna go. well, or you just say, "Hey, it's nine o'clock Central Time. 
and we never know how early the day is going to start, so we go to bed as soon as we can. There you go. But I asked you to call yep. in, and you did, and I'm really grateful that you have. And, uh, you know, this is Giving Tuesday, and so we're just we're just talking with people about what Giving Tuesday means to them. What is Giving Tuesday, what does giving mean? Um, what what are the ways we can give? And uh, and uh, if if it's worthwhile giving to to the Robert Schuller Ministries, does this thing have any value? So these are the kinds of things we've been talking about today, and and uh, I've had lots of different pastors on. A lot of my friends have been calling in, and and uh, so we've been talking about tithing uh, and everything else. So. I know you've been involved in ministry. You were a pastor at a at a large church in Dallas, and before that, you were the the uh, I think you were the youngest and the and the first female chaplain at ORU, if I'm not mistaken, and Oral Roberts University. So you've had a you've had a a, a long and distinguished career as a as a and now and now you have the most important job of all. And that's raising my grandkids. So, <laughs> yeah. I have the best job I've ever had. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like you know when you were listing all the questions there, they're plentiful. You know, I mean, but you've had nine hours here to kind of answer them and go back and forth. And when you think about whether you guys are, you know, worthy of investing in financially, I I take a little pride in myself because I think who's more qualified to answer that than a child. And I always think of, you know, I've got to say, Dad, I've told so many people this over the years, and I wish I'd looked up their reference before calling you. Um, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but there's a scripture in the New Testament that talks about, like, the qualifications for a leader in the church. And so much of those qualifications are having to do with the person's family. Mm-hmm. You know, are his children mm-hmm. in right standing with the Lord? Are his children, you know, loving God and are they good people? And is his wife, mm-hmm. you know, a certain type of person? And um, it's interesting because, you know, I I often, when I went off to school or or Roberts University, people kind of looked at me in the corner of their eye and, you know, only a few brave souls had the courage to find a nice way of asking me, like, so are you the black sheep in your family? Because everyone knows what a preacher's daughter is like. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, that's not me at all, actually. I'm, I don't, I'm not footloose. I'm not that stereotype. But, you know, it's not to pat myself on the back. It's just to say that, that I just want to testify, I guess, that you guys have always been the same in the home as you are in media and as you are in the spotlight. And I can tell you from my experience working with ministers and in ministries that, unfortunately, that's not as common as it should be. And it's not to say that I'm casting judgment on any one particular person so much as it is to say, if you're going to invest in a ministry, if you're going to, you know, focus on a ministry, you probably want to find one that um, that is as much as you can find, at least, free of some of this hypocrisy that is so prevalent and that gets people in trouble, you know? So that's really the thing that I wanted to share when talking is that that I just really appreciate that about you guys over the years. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. And you know what's interesting? We didn't have a black sheep in our family, you know? Right? And I mean... It wasn't you. Yes, that's kind of my point. I yeah, no, said I that. know. No, I know. But we, it wasn't you. You're, you know, you're the oldest of our four kids. It wasn't Bobby. It wasn't um, Christina. For a while, we thought it might be Anthony. No, <laughs> but it wasn't Anthony. Well, for a while, we for thought, a while it, was we thought it might be. And then, and but, for a while, we thought it might be Bobby. Bobby and, and for a yeah, while, we thought it might, it might be Angie. Be, but, but the point is, you all went through tough times as teens, as all teenagers do. And that people, I hope you're listening here. Okay, our kids were not. Perfect. There's not no such thing as a perfect child. Not even child. close. <laughs> but but the thing is, we worked together as a family. Nobody did anything horrible. That's not what I'm saying. But but we didn't have any black sheep, and we have this these incredible adult kids. And that's what Dad and I say all the time now. Of everything we've ever done in our life, 
and we've done a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, lots of stuff of everything we've ever accomplished. I mean, this man here has written 17 books. I mean, preached to millions of people all over the world, continues to do so. Of everything, we're more proud of our four adult children, their spouses, and the families you all are building. And you know what? That is a testament to the glory of God and to um, being disciplined enough to follow God in the difficult times. And we've raised all four of you to do the same thing. And nothing could make us prouder than to tell people each and every one of our kids does something so positive for society so that, that they add something. So that's an interesting thing you brought up. Thank you for saying that you feel like we're effective or we are worthy of being pastors because we have a we do have a wonderful family it's not like anybody's done anything you know that um well anyway we can thank god for that we can thank and, god yeah and uh and i think uh, the only credit we can take for that is we we put in a lot of time into our kids when that's exactly it. and uh we committed to that so Thank you for calling in, Angie. We appreciate it very, very we much. We do. We actually have somebody else that just we called. We love in. you, and uh, love can't you wait lots. to see you again. Yeah. We can just... I say one more thing really yes, fast? You can say can two things if you want. Please. Okay. Please. Because some people might be watching and they may not know what what you're doing explicitly. Like maybe they've just maybe they've missed the last seven hours or they've oh, yeah, exactly. for five minutes. Oh yeah, no, we've been we keep know? repeating it over and, and over. And one of yeah. Yes, you've been over and over it. But one thing that I have seen and been a part of mm -hmm. is watching you help families. And so I think what you've done is taken what you've learned from your experience in building your family, going through the struggles that you went through with us, because there really were struggles. I didn't mean to imply that there weren't. No, and I'm no, so no, glad you, you didn't said that, Donna. <laughs> no, that was important to clarify, though. And um, But you've taken that and you've become, like, shepherds, mentors to other people and other families who mm -hmm. really needed some guidance in very serious times. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that it's so important that you're in a position to be able to continue doing that. You know, you can't, if you, you can't just, if you're working for a company, for instance, just take off and go take care of somebody who's in need. That's right. You can't do that all the time. You can mm -hmm. barely do it if it's your own family members. But you guys are in a position right now because you're working with full-time ministry that you can be available on call when there's a need responding. So That's what I just do. wanted to throw that out there. I know you have someone else waiting. I love you. you guys. And have a great night. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Angie. We love you. Thank we you. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I don't know. So let's see if, let's see if our, these work here. Maybe we can. Let's get somebody here. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Nobody. Whoever Tracy was, Jones Paulette. I know whoever How called. Cool whoever called in here didn't didn't stay on the line. Darn it! They're gone. Let's see if Tracy Paulette wants to be added here. Okay. I, I have a feeling she's going to say no because everybody does. Everybody has said <laughs> no. We try to add them on Facebook, which we don't know. It says adding, adding, adding. This hasn't worked have all day. You have, have to, to accept. accept and, and Boy, some other people are up there, though. See, I yeah. think the people up in the right corner are the ones that say they want to be added. See, but she but was one of those. Okay. The guest, the guest declined. declined. Yeah. Okay, no so, problem. Uh, no problem. Well, not, is I'm there somebody? Go Wait, no, no. But what? No. Just see if somebody will accept. <laughs> no. No? Okay. okay. Well, we'll try one more. One and more. That's Debbie. Okay. Let's see Debbie. if Debbie wants to be on. I don't think so. Okay, what we don't job? even know if this feature is working because we've tried it several times today and it hasn't worked. No. We think it's because this is a Facebook page and not a profile, which yeah. is in but and anyway. of itself complicated. But it says adding, wait, it says adding, adding. Yeah. Okay, so we, talk talk again. Let's go back because it's been a while. It's probably been 45 minutes at least, maybe 30 minutes. I don't know, time's flying in this nine-hour uh uh, what is it called? Giveathon. Giveathon. Shareathon. Shareathon. Okay. Giveathon. Shareathon. Whatever. On, on giving, giving Tuesday, not Paul, Thursday. Paul Crouch. Yeah, uh, I have no answer on that one. Okay. See, it is. It, something's happening on uh, the Facebook. Okay. So Paul Crouch Jr. told us earlier when he called what four hours ago, you may need to get up and dance. And I'm thinking, you know, we may need to. 
But yeah, uh, well, yeah, well, we've got anyway, another, go ahead and, uh, another hour and read, thirty-five read minutes. Read what we what we're doing for but, giving, giving. But he, here's what we're doing. Giving this Tuesday. Yeah, today is Giving Tuesday, and uh, we are we are asking people to make a donation to this ministry because we need two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars annually, and in twenty nineteen, that's our budget: two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. And without that, we can't continue to do what we do. And to tell you what we do with $214,000, we will develop 324 videos. Yeah, yeah that's a lot of videos. That's a lot of production. <laughs> that's a lot of production. So we're, we have a daily devotional. Uh, if you wish to get your daily devotionals and emails, you can. But the, the only way I know how to do it without, a, uh, without getting a, a more expense is for you to subscribe on my YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is Robert Schuler Ministries. So if you go to Robert Schuler, search Robert Schuler Ministries in YouTube, my channel will come up. You, you subscribe to the channel. After you subscribe, you have to click on the alerts, which is the little bell next to the subscription notice. And then you will be added and you will get an email every time we post another, uh, another video. So in 2019, if we have the ability to, to, to raise this money, you will get 324 uh, notices from me that we posted another video. And you tell them how short they are. They're, They're short and powerful. Sorry, I'm answering two, here. 260 of them are 90 right. seconds long right so that's the daily um, the daily vital living daily and you click on that and there will be your daily inspiration just a perfect way to start the day or if you're feeling down you're halfway through the day and you just pull that up on your email and hit that and you can get that little boost then our then we have our our Sundays, which are about 20 minutes long, so we have a Sunday worship service. Uh, with, unfortunately, we don't have any music on there, but what we do have is we have 52 Sundays with prayer and with discussion and with a, with a, a 10 to 10 to 15 minutes uh, morning message. And so we do that every Sunday, and then once a month we have our one hour. Uh, Vital Living Monthly, where Don and I are in this in a similar setting to this, and we have an inspiring guest similar to to the phone call that we have, and that's what we do. So that's our that's just our videos. Now, this budget covers all of that for two hundred fourteen thousand. And our essays, our blogs. And then, in addition to that, we have these blogs that we post on our website drschuler.org and we have how many blogs are you doing a, a month every single day 20 so a month 20 a month <laughs> yeah five days a week five days a week and uh i've just recently started asking people to uh help me by being guest bloggers because to get up every morning and to think of something and these aren't just this isn't just something i'm a, it's just not something like i'm gonna blog about the trees in the neighborhood today these are what we're doing is Felt needs evangelism. So what we're doing, we are reaching people where they are. So if somebody's in a doctor's office and they come out and they're distressed because they've just gotten a really terrible diagnosis, they don't know what to do, guess where they turn to today? They turn to this, this little device called a smartphone. It's your computer, right? And they start Googling cancer diagnosis, what to do. Or they start Googling after they've heard that their child is a drug addict drug addiction or maybe they're struggling with alcoholism themselves and they get up and they, they 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 type in alcoholism or alcohol abuse or help for alcohol or maybe in worst of worst situations they're feeling suicidal so these are the things we write about every single day we're not talking about light subjects so i always say it's tough to get up every day and write something like that, but that's what God wants me to do. That's how God's called us to do. Robert does all the videos. I do 99.9% .9 of the writing, and I've started asking guest bloggers, and there's somebody that we just talked to a little recently. If she's still on there, I may ask her to 
Oh, she got off the phone. Yeah, our daughter, Angie, I'm going to ask her if she'd like to be a guest blogger because she likes to write. She's an excellent writer. But anyway, it's felt needs evangelism. It's being where people are when they go online and they Google. Our Robert Schuller Ministries will come up, and that's what we're about. We want to infuse them with hope. We want to infuse them with the love of Jesus, the hope found in Jesus, the, the answer to their questions when there's no answer to why God, why did I get sick? Why God, why did my children do this? Why God, why am I going through divorce? Any of these terrible, scary things that can happen to us in life that we want to be there where people are at their lowest. And that's what we're doing. And that's why this is important to support this ministry so that we can continue to put out these daily devotionals. Like they're 90 seconds long. People don't have an intention span anymore. I mean, if I could tell you how many people we've seen come and go, come and go all day, meaning every couple of seconds, you know, the average person watches a Facebook live message for three, three to 10 seconds. So people have been coming and going all day. There's been many of you that have been on here and listened, and I know you have to jump off and come back, and that's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that have no idea. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We've got to have no. at least 100 people watching for nine hours. No, not, no, never but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who are searching and looking, and there's so much junk out there. So we're never going to get rid of the junk. We're never going to get no. rid of the bad blogs where people are desperate and they type in, you know, cancer, and they get a wrong answer from somebody. We're not going to do away with that. But we can dilute some of the negative stuff by putting out more good stuff. So that's what we've been called to do. Uh, along with our, you know, our visits, we, we said earlier, we'll keep saying it again and again, our favorite thing is hands-on ministry. Robert still marries people, baptizes children and adults, anybody that wants to be baptized, and he buries people. And um, we do whatever we can to visit our friends in the hospital. When we were recently down on our Mexico mission, we actually had to take somebody to the emergency room and we sat there with her for a couple of hours. She was scared to death. We thought she was having a stroke. Thank God she didn't, but she had some serious problems while we were out at lunch after our yep. Sunday gathering down there. And uh, for some reason, God wanted us to drive her to the hospital and sit there. But you know, this is what we do. We don't, this isn't a hobby, this isn't part time. We're in full time ministry, and the only difference is from we are we, Robert is a church pastor, but he does not have church walls anymore. We're a church with no walls. We do our Sunday morning service outside in a park, it's beautiful, and you know, it's just this is a new way of doing ministry. But people, we're reaching people where they are, and they're online. If you want to reach us by uh, by email, uh, here's our email addresses, Robert at SchulerMinistries.org and Donna at mm -hmm. SchulerMinistries.org. It's, we're trying to make this as simple as possible. We're trying to uh, communicate the love of Jesus in every possible way. And uh, in order for us to, to do this, uh, we need your support. Uh, the bottom line is we, we can't do it without you. So if you can uh, send a donation uh, by mail or by clicking on the, the easiest way, I think, is for you is probably to hit the donation button at the top of the, of the uh, Facebook Live feed that you have. But if that doesn't feel comfortable to you and you like to send, a, you want to send a check, here is the, here is the address to send the check to. It's Robert Schuler Ministries, 2128 Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. That's Robert Schuler Ministries, 2128 Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. You can also text your donation to RSM. That text the initials, that's for Robert Schuler Ministries, RSM, to 360-900-1338. That's 360-900-1338. And, uh, and then we also have a, a, uh, a button on our website at Robert Schuler, no, uh, Dr. Schuler. Schuler. Dr. Schuler. Dr. Schuler. Dr. Schuler. Too many Robert Schuler's. Yes, exactly. Dr. Schuler.org. 
and uh, you'll see a, uh, you, you can give now button there as well. So those are the various ways that you can give to this ministry to help us reach our budget of $214,000, which again will cover everything we do. And um, office, no, obviously, the offices, office, all of our supplies are. Yeah. So there are there are expenses and and quite frankly, I, if if I if I didn't have to do this, I probably wouldn't. But God wants me to do this because I've been able to pray for people. We've been praying for people all, all day. day long, yeah. and we've been ministering to people. This is an opportunity. This has been a very um, uh, touching. You know, there's been a couple of times I've seen tears well up at your eyes, Don. Right. And it's it's been a very touching and and, and beautiful time for us. And yeah. we wouldn't be doing it if we had the financial means to support this ourselves. Right. And the fact that we need your your financial gifts to do this is the reason we're 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 having this long spending this time from nine hours. Nine hours, exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, we're God's using this to spread the message to to build our to build our audience and to for us to be able to let you know that you can help even if you don't have money. If you can't make a contribution, a financial contribution, here is how you can help. Post uh repost or, or share this information on with your Facebook friends. Do that, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, like the, the different posts that we have. And if you do these things, that will, that will be extremely helpful as well. That's a great way of giving. Actually. It is. And so, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, messages on this Facebook that you can share. There's memes, there's uh, the 60 to 90 second videos that Robert talked about that are also on YouTube. And then there's Sunday mornings you can share. We're not talking about sharing this, this whole nine hour. <laughs> no, no, don't go no, sharing no, this don't nine go hour don't go share this uh -huh. nine hour gift along. People will think you're crazy, first of all, and say, what? I'm not going to watch that. But um, we've been on nine hours, almost. We haven't been on nine hours yet. We've been on seven hours and 35 minutes so far. Uh -huh. and I can't believe this. So we're, <laughs> this has gone by really fast. But anyway, we love what we do. We love uh, being ministers. Um, you know, I, I've said it over and over. I'm going to say it again. Robert's been a pastor, ordained pastor in the Reformed Church in America for 40 years. and Over 40 years. <laughs> and I can't believe it. You're not that old. And I've been um, pastoring with him for 34 years, our whole marriage. And trust me, we've seen a lot of change. We used to be in a mega, mega church with a big staff that helped us raise money and help keep us in line and did all the stuff that we're not good at, all the administrative stuff and the organizational stuff. Some days it's a real struggle. But what we know, because we know without a shadow of a doubt, is that God wants us to keep doing what we're doing, spreading the good news of Jesus, spraying the, spraying, spreading the good news of Jesus, spreading the, um, the peace and the grace that comes through knowing him um, realizing the greatest gift that was ever given it was it was the gift of Jesus, knowing that we're not perfect, knowing that uh, God is the only perfect person, knowing that we can learn so much more about ourselves, others, and God if we just continue to open our hearts and our eyes to the reality of his existence, the reality of his power, <laughs> and what he can do in our lives. And what if we just have enough trust and faith, we can realize that, the God of the Bible, that, that all these miracles you read about, he's alive and well today, and he lives through the Holy Spirit. His power is found in the Holy Spirit that indwells in us if we accept the re this reality. And through the Holy Spirit, we have the power to overcome any, pro any problem. We have the power to, to fix family relationships. We have the power to, to hold on to faith and hold on to hope when we feel hopeless. So this is what we do. We don't do this part-time. This isn't a hobby. This isn't, oh, gee, there's nothing better to do. My husband was called to be a pastor of the Lord Jesus Christ when he was a child. I never dreamt I'd be married to a pastor, but somehow 35 years ago, he introduced me to this guy, and 34 years ago, we married. And it's been a wild ride. It's been a lot of ups and downs. We've had a blended family with four children. 
Uh, two that we had together and the first two are, are older. Angie was on earlier. Bobby was on earlier. They were three and six years old when we married. So we've been through a lot. We know about blended families. We know about um, hardship. We know about, about losing our calling and our jobs. And, and when we lost our ministry um, as it existed many 10 years ago, and we've reinvented ourselves in that way. And it's not easy. And I said earlier, and I'll say it again, it's so humbling to have to, to write to our friends and write to our people who are supporters who have now become friends and ask them for money every year and give them a report of all we do. We used to have people do this for us. But, you know, we live in a world where we need money to make things happen, to pay for the rent in this two-bedroom two bath apartment, which is also our office. We need money to put gas in the car. We need money to eat. We need money to do things. We need money to produce our videos. We need, that's the world we live in. So for some reason, God wanted to humble us and have us have to ask. And you know what? I'm, I'm not embarrassed of it. It's just an interesting place to be in, to be able to, to have to ask for your, your, tithes and offerings for your own ministry and not having a staff do that after so many years. Yeah, there was a time where we had a staff of close to 700. So that was a big ministry. Yeah. And um, anyway, most of you probably know some of this, but, but the good news is that, that Don and I have the privilege mm. of connecting with people like yourself. And we love connecting. I, I'm looking here at Tracy Jones Paulette. I had the privilege of of driving down to San Diego and doing their 25th wedding anniversary. And I uh, For Tracy? Who lives in she lives in Texas. Tracy was at our school and at our church and her little girls grew up with our kids. Maybe I'm getting her confused with something. You know else. Tracy. We got to get your you gotta, Yes, I do. Robert's I'm, I'm never been confused. good with names. I'm confusing her with somebody else who is Tina. Who's, Tina, Tina Ackerman was on. Tina, Tina Ackerman, Ackerman was on right one. under you. You know Robert's a little bit dyslexic in that way. I'm so, not. This is not a joke. It's not a funny thing. But he's not good with names. But I, I will give him this. Tina Ackerman was on right under you the, when you were up here earlier, Tracy, and he did drive all the way down. He married. He married her, and then he went down and did a renewal of vows recently. Twenty for her twenty fifth wedding anniversary. Tracy's been married much longer than that. Yeah. <laughs> so an anyway, so so if that's the. If that's that's the worst uh, faux pas, you faux pas I make all day. I'm, I'm really happy. It probably isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so after nine hours of being live yeah. on something, I'm going to make some, some mistakes. You think? But, yeah, I know. But, oh, Mary's back. Mary, can you believe it? We're still here. Yes, we're still here, Mary. Still here. So check and make sure that nobody's, nobody's on the call. In. Because, okay. Yep, okay, nobody's yeah. on right now. Awesome. So... So anyway, I, I'm, we are expecting some more people to call in. I have, uh, I know uh, my son Anthony said he's going to call in pretty soon. And then I have uh, Paul Murray, who's going to be calling in. We've, oh, he we've, did call. That's who it was. I saw an East Coast call? number, a 201. Oh. You're right. I knew it was a number I recognized. He did call in and we couldn't get to him. We were talking to someone else. So Paul Murray is, I'm expecting him to call in. I'll send him another text message. He's too. on East Coast too. Yeah. He's getting ready for bed. It's quarter to 11. Yeah. So we're on until midnight East Coast time. And I know why the Europeans all went away. It's the middle of the night. Think of it. They were on at like noon, one o'clock, two o'clock. We had people on from Spain and Italy and the Netherlands and Germany and it's just great to be reminded that we really have an international ministry. Absolutely. And we have to keep saying the same thing. Most of you just come and go, so it's, it's new news. And that is, this is what we do. This isn't part-time. This isn't a hobby. God has called us to be pastors. And as such, and I loved what Jamie said, it's so much easier to be a pastor in a, in a brick-and-mortar church, much easier in many, many ways and the most important thing is that we get to, uh, and especially when Robert preaches, we get immediate feedback from people, from yeah, the body, from the eyeballs, from people like shaking, you know, nodding their heads saying, oh yeah, right on, or preach it brother, or we get a lot of encouragement and it's a really lonely world out here. Just he and I, and now we have uh, Jamie who helps us with our, our video posting and actually video creation. But 
it's different. It's really different. And, and, and I'll say it again. It's also very, very humbling. When you're a pastor in a church, you have a staff that helps you raise money. You have a staff that actually asks for the money. And God has chosen to humble us to such a degree that we write letters out to our supporters and to friends and to a lot of people that were supporters that have become friends or a lot of friends that have become supporters. And it's tough. I mean, you know, most people are on a paycheck. And so, you know, yeah, you're in sales or you do various things and it depends on how well you do or how much luck you have in a month or how much God blesses you. But we have to ask for donations and, you know, we live in a brick and mortar world. I mean, we live right here. It's our apartment and also our church office. And there's bills that need to be paid here. Robert has talked over and over about how many videos we're going to put out this year. We've talked over and over about how many, how many blogs, which are basically essays that we write every single day, five days a week uh, for, yep. to, to address the felt needs of people that are suffering. The people that come out of that doctor's office and have been giving that horrible diagnosis and they say, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And they, they grab their phone and they type in heart disease or they type in cancer or maybe they've, they've found out that their child's a drug addict and they grab this, they grab this computer, this smartphone, and they Google these things. And so our name is starting to come up because we write something, a felt needs evangelistic piece every single day, five days a week because we're never going to get away we're never going to do away with the negative things on the internet. Absolutely. So all we can do is dilute it. And we're going to dilute it with the power of God, with the love of Jesus Christ, with sharing the grace of Jesus with people. And that's what we're going to continue to do. And we're probably going to do it till the day we die. And again, it's not a hobby. It's a calling. And it's a great calling. Are there people on here? Yeah, Paul Murray's on. Paul Murray. Hi, I was on a roll, so... Yeah, you're preaching you. it, baby. No, I didn't even see you. <laughs> Pastor Murray. I didn't I didn't want to interrupt because you were really just spelling it out there <laughs> how true your ministry is to so many people. You reach so many folks that you probably don't even hear back from, but you make such a powerful impact. Uh, both of you. It's it's so exciting to see a ministry that is combined by two people that love so much and i'm so glad to be blessed by your friendship your presence your prayers and all that you do for for me and for so many other people it's just just so wonderful and and my prayer is that god will bless your ministry that it will be multiplied a hundredfold because it is so needed in our country and around the world as you reach people all over the world, I'm praying that God will bless you back with the resources so that you can do even more for him, because I know that's where your heart, your passion, and your life is. And so it's just so great to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And, you know, Paul Paul, and, and Robert and I, and, and on occasion, Paul's wife, Rachel, we travel together with Global Peace Foundation, and we've been all over the world. And... We have ministered to people in the remotest areas. We've ministered to people in some of the most bizarre areas, uh, under yeah. the most bizarre <laughs> conditions. Correct, Paul? And God. Oh, we've has... been. Hey, you remember the? You remember? You remember the tents in Mongolia? Oh yes. <laughs> what do you call them? Irks? Irks? The Irks. The Irks in Mongolia. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was yes. that was quite something. I I remember using a a bathroom out in the field that looked like we were in the middle of Wyoming and there was a little wooden <laughs> lean-to that looked like a small teepee, but it was made out of wood with a hole dug in the ground. And that was the ladies' room. Well, that was the and, bathroom. <laughs> and it was it just a <laughs> few right. boards and, and going up see a, through. Going, going, up a, going up a hill in the bus and oh, that, that yeah. transported us. To, and it was such a tilt that you felt like you had to lean on the opposite side exactly. so the bus would roll. The bus was going to flip over. I know. We've done some amazing ministry together, and we have a lot more to do. I know we're going to uh, Korea in uh, February. In so. February. That is correct. Yes. Yeah, and and so we'll looking there. forward to it. Will um, your yes. darling wife be there? Will Rachel get to go this time? Yes, she will. Yes, she will be in Korea also. Yes. Great. Great. And, and what we do in Korea is we 
we go and and pray for the reunification of the Korean Peninsula. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, Paul? Sure, absolutely. We are really focused on what is happening um, in North Korea. There are many uh, Christians uh, underground. There are those that are in camps right now because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And so our prayer is for a release of those individuals. Uh, many times at uh, in the morning, I will get up and I will pray for them because I know that they, at that time in the morning, they are all just going into bed or going to sleep at night and it's late. And I think about them laying on those cold floors and having no food, having been beaten, having worked all day. And, and my prayer is always, Lord, as you as they lay their heads upon uh, the ground this morning, let them feel like there's a pillow there and comfort them. And oh, as cold as it may be, let there be a blanket of your spirit wrapped around them to keep them warm. And as their stomachs ache from hunger, Lord, that you just fill them. And so we're focused on praying for North Korea. We're praying that Northern Korea will be reunified. Uh, come February when we're there in 2019, it'll be the 100th year anniversary of the first attempt for liberation of North and South Korea, I should say North Korea. And so we're hoping to see God really move in a country that really needs God so badly, mm -hmm. and that there are people there that are giving their lives for it. And um, I know Robert's ministry is a powerful ministry. We've, I've seen him in operation uh, in Brazil and other places around the world as he speaks to the thousands. And uh, it's just such a powerful, powerful ministry. And so really, really, I encourage everyone to, to be in prayer for, for your ministry and then to support it, to support it financially. Um, as you give to this ministry, it's not going to waste. It's, it's definitely going to have a powerful impact for Jesus Christ. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Paul. Thank I you. appreciate that very much. And um, it's been an honor for me to get to know you and to travel around the world. And you've gotten... You've, you've been the one who has booked some of these amazing speaking opportunities for me in these churches. Mm -hmm. And specifically, I'm thinking of in, in, uh, in Africa and uh, Brazil. And uh, so I thank you for that and for the, the role you play in this ministry. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, thank you very, very well, much. And, and we can't wait to be with you again in person. Uh, Pastor Murray, uh, I should say Reverend Dr. Murray, lives on, and Bishop, where is the Bishop going? Is it Reverend Dr. Bishop, Pastor Murray? It's, it's, it's actually, I was told it's actually um, Bishop Dr. Okay. Paul yes. Murray. Bishop. So, so you drop yeah. the Reverend, exactly. and now Bishop, okay. and the Bishop goes before Doctor. Well, if you yeah. go back to school again and get another title, we're not going to know what to call you. So just, <laughs> no, I'm no, just no, going to continue to call you just... Paul, my friend Paul. <laughs> My friend Paul, preacher of the word, preacher of the truth. But um, we look forward to traveling with you for many more years. And uh, it's just Amen. a privilege. And, and we adore Rachel. I look forward to you being with her in Korea. Please pass that along to her. And being um, part of the Global Peace Women and Global Peace, uh, the Greater Global Peace uh, Foundation. And doing what we can to work together uh, for peace with with people from that aren't the same as us they don't believe the same as us they believe in god but they 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 relate to him in a different way and, and their culture dictates a lot of that and we as christians go in there and we have a strong message of jesus and i have no doubt we're exactly where we're supposed to be when we yeah, travel absolutely. to these you know countries these right. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking about when you guys have gone to the philippines and your ministry over there and yes. and just, just how powerful that is. And, you know, and the fact that you've connected with Manny Pacquiao mm -hmm. uh, over there and, and ministered to his folks uh, connected to his church uh, that, that he attends. Um, and, and really, as you, what people don't realize is the expense uh, to be able to travel to some of these places and go to those remote sites where your folks have had to go. And um, it's not an easy task. And mm -hmm. so, it'd be, you know, it's really wonderful that, first of all, that people just really continue to lift you both up in prayer. Yes, and we need that. That's so important. Yes. 
that is so important because we know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. And so we just focus on that. And then if they are able to, to sow into your ministry because it's so important that they may not be able to go, but they can go through you. And that's, that's what I'm really encouraging folks to understand because you are out there every day. You share your experiences in your ministries on Facebook and, and elsewhere so people can really be a part of what's happening in the park. And even traveling to those places, you're able to even get on Facebook and say, hi, folks, we are here exactly. in Mexico. We're here in Brazil. And um, you get to experience that firsthand. And there aren't too many ministries out there that really open the door like that. So that kind of support really allows you to continue to do that. And it's great for all of us that when you're traveling and I'm not with you and you're, you're in different places that I can watch it on Facebook and, and see you minister and, and hear what's happening. And that's so exciting. And, and be, be, be able to be a part of that. It's so great. I'm sorry. No, it wasn't, it wasn't us. It's okay. Mm. And we're waiting. There's somebody else on the call and they weren't muted. So I just muted. Okay. No then I'm going to get off. Because no I big deal. Hold the, hold the... No, no big deal. <laughs> No big deal. But thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for calling, Paul. And, uh, you know, you know, we, we, we support your ministry. We support and, and pray for you all the time. You and your great family. And uh, we love your kids. We love your grandkids. And God put us together for a purpose, for a reason, what, almost 10 years ago now. And uh, we enjoy working right. together to spread the good news of Jesus, the love and the grace found in knowing him. We share that together with you, and it's wonderful. Hey. Amen. Yeah, Appreciate that. Yeah. Amen. Let me see if I can get okay. this thing to work. Okay, bye. I'm going to call, but but this we have somebody no. else on the line. All right, okay. I'll let you guys go. Go bless. Okay, okay. God, okay. God bless you, Bye. Too. Tom and Tom and Mary, are you there? Somebody somebody from the old family. We're here. We're here. Hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm hey. so sorry. I'm a little bit of well, I'm so sorry that we were talking about we were talking about something else. We forgot to be quiet, no, and I'd like to no, apologize no, 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 no. for interrupting your guest. No, it's not a problem. Oh that God. was Pastor Paul Murray. We just put you on. When I heard it, I go, "Oh, that's Mary's voice." I put you on mute. I heard something, but he thought it was us talking to him. So no big deal. I'll help. No big deal. So. Um, yeah, so gosh, you guys have supported our ministry. We've known you guys for years. Uh, you have a long history with Robert Schuler Ministries in lots of different ways, you know. And uh, we appreciate you. And uh, thank you, Mary. Mary well, came. That's for sure. Mary came by earlier with Janie Pooh and little Van, baby Van, and we loved it. It was the only live guest in person we had all day, Big Tom, and we made her sit down here. And Robert's seat, and I put the mic on. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, it was really nice. It broke up the morning quite a bit. Morning, yeah. So we only have an hour uh, and five minutes left. Can you believe it? We I did it. We almost. I can't had. believe you've done this. This is an accomplishment. It is. It is an accomplishment. <laughs> well, well, thank you guys for your support of this ministry. We really, really appreciate it. You know, we can't do what we, what we do without you. And uh, so, uh, again, we just thank you for everything you've done for us. We appreciate you, and uh, thank you very much. Well, Robert, uh, I think, you know, we appreciate you as well. I mean, when I was had my knee operation, I showed up at the hospital, it kind of shocked me, but you've got that pastor spirit. <laughs> Which is unique. A lot of guys that run churches don't come out to be a pastor. <laughs> and a friend. Well, well thank but, you, Tom. I'm so happy we do know you. Uh, and, uh, I will, you know, you know, when I hear people in the hospital, I do everything I can to to, to visit them. And uh, it doesn't always work, but I, I go out of my way to do whatever I can. Um, you know, I just wake up every day saying, oh, Lord, what do you want me to do? And and it's amazing how many how many times my days don't turn out anything like right. the way I planned. Uh, something happens, or I find out you're in the hospital, or somebody else in the hospital. I and I change my plans, and I just go out there and I pray for people because I, I believe in the power of prayer and uh, want to make a difference. So, well, you've made a difference for us, Robert, and our family, and. Uh, we're so thankful to even know you. I mean, you're a great guy. But most of all, you've got the Holy Spirit in you, and you're 
I don't know how you can say so positive all the time, frankly, because <laughs> <laughs> we love that about you, Robert. Well, thank you're, you. You're, you're someone I look up to because I honestly don't know how you do it. <laughs> Mm. You definitely got your eyes on Jesus to have that sort of faith. That's it. That's all I do. That's what and it is. And it's amazing. Yeah. And we love you guys. Do you want me, can I bore your guest by telling the story of the hospital or no? Because, Robert, I don't even know if you know this. No. We had James' gigantic baby shower that day, and Tom was in there with the replacement. But right when you came by, he had had a reaction to the medicine, and he thought that he was supposed to call an Uber and go home from Hope Hospital. So oh, it was actually no. really kind of dramatic, because Tom and I don't do the best possible. And, um, but anyway, that's the kind of stuff that happens when you're just freely working for the Lord. And that's what we love about your ministry. You guys have meant so much to us in so many ways. Just, I mean between knowing every single dramatic incident in our lives and being there for us to just sending me a verse when it's something I need to hear. And I think I said this morning, one of my favorite things of recent years is turning on the TV and going to a worldwide church where I literally can be myself and relax and still hear the word of God spoken in such a way that I can understand. And I just think that is, the beauty of your ministry and I encourage everyone to support you um, and we just hope that you stay on the year for many years to come. I'm hoping that my kids, when they need to go to church, they can just turn on the internet and go to church because I really believe in church without walls. Thank you. But anyway, here's Tom. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, no, no. <laughs> Thank but you, anyway, Tom. You know, Robert, I think, I've watched you over your whole life. I actually think I met you back at Rancher Camp Astrona years ago. 23 years ago. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's, very, it's been really heartwarming to see the way you move through your life and what you're doing right now, because I think you've actually, you've got a purpose, and you've got a direction that few men really understand. And I, I just encourage you in every way possible to continue and just never lose faith that God is directing your ministry, directing you and Donna in a direction that is serving him. And thank you so much, Robert. Really appreciate it. And I urge everyone to support this ministry because it's super valuable. It's super unique. It's super authentic. And it's a big part of our life. Thank you. Do you want to use the word super? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. What do I always do? I use the word exactly like five times every time Robert and I are on together. I say exactly, exactly, exactly. Kind of like the word minute, Mary. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> anyway. Well, I'm just, I, to all those people out there listening, I just encourage you, if you know the Schulers like we do and are fortunate, join this ministry, and I guarantee you, you'll get to know them. They're probably the most, accessible people that are the kindest and most genuine to the point of saying things like golly, which I personally love. But Do I, I just think he that does. they really <laughs> just, Robert does. Oh, but I think that it, <laughs> I just think that with more support, this church can grow. And I do love the idea of a church without borders and a church without walls. I think it's, it's just the beauty of of the internet right now, and I, I just urge everyone to uh, get involved in it. Thank you, Mary. So, thank you. Thank you for your thank you for your ministry to us, and we love you. We love and here's thank you, Mary. And thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Donna. We love can't do what we do without your support. So we thank you, and we thank you for it. So. Yeah. Uh, well, keep praying you for us. We we thank you for your prayer. We appreciate absolutely. It. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. We have before we bye. Um, bye. bye. bye <laughs> See ya. Bye. See ya. Um, our son, our youngest son, is on now. Um, before we introduce Anthony and say hi again, you can say Anthony. But here's how to donate. You can text RSM to the phone number there three six zero nine hundred one three three eight. Text RSM. You can see it on there. 
That's one way to give. You can also go to the top of the screen on Facebook and you can click donate. Or you can mail us a donation at, this is our home, this is where we're sitting right now, which is also our office, Robert Schuller Ministries, 2128 Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. And obviously your donations are tax deductible. We haven't said that all day, but I'm assuming people know that since we're a church. Um, so thank you. Um, our son is on there. He's been patiently waiting for eight minutes and 24 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> we know exactly. Exactly. So Anthony, are you, are you there? Is he still there? Is yeah, there? I'm here. Oh, hey. Thanks for taking time out of your hey. day to call. I already said to a lot of people earlier that I had the best conversation with you earlier today, and I really appreciated that. Uh, being a mom of a 31-year-old youngest child in the family, <laughs> you, uh, I just really appreciate it. It warmed my heart that you spent so much time talking to your mama on the phone. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I love you guys. Yeah. Well, today is, today is Giving Tuesday, and what we're doing is we're asking people what does that mean to, to be a to be a giver, or what does that mean to uh, to keep in mind as far as life principles are concerned? And uh, so I thought I'd present it to you as the same question is, and what is what does giving mean to you? Um, you know, that's a. I mean, it's kind of a tough question. But at the same time, it's not a tough question. Mm -hmm. um, I say it's tough because uh, I feel like uh, most of the time people think giving, they think, uh, you know, what can I purchase this person? Or what can I, you know, actually physically give to somebody? Um, and, and coming from firsthand, being from, uh, you, know, uh, you know, as a student right now, it's like I... I that's not a place where I'm at. Like I can't, no, you can't give. really buy, you know, but, but where give, giving comes for me is, is in just the little things, you know, um, giving of your time, giving of your assistance, uh, giving of, of just, just kind of seeing where you can add value to somebody else's life. Um, and kind of taking yourself out of the equation for a moment. That's or rather, putting yourself in as uh, as a way to serve and just kind of help someone else. That's nice. That's really nicely said. I love that. Very nice. Because and and it kind of fits in with what I've been saying a lot. I say if you don't have if you don't have the ability to to give financially, what you can do is you can pray for this ministry, because only God knows how much that means uh, to us and to you. Because when you pray for somebody, uh, it doesn't always change things for you or for that individual, but it does change the individual who's praying. And so I encourage people to pray. The second thing people can do is they can share. If you see one of our memes or one of our posts that we have that means something to you, share it with your friends. And I've been encouraging people to do that. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at Robert Schiller <coughs> Ministries. If you go to Robert, if you go to YouTube and subscribe on Robert Schiller Ministries, and then hit the little alert uh, bell. Um, all young people know how to do this because YouTube people listen to music and they watch videos and movies and all that. But what you do is you go subscribe, then hit the alert button. And then from there, you will get a daily alert five days a week when Robert's um, video posts. And that's just a 60 to 90 minute, 90 minutes, 60 to 90 second <laughs> video. It's very short. I like to say it's short, but it's really powerful. And he's, it's a short video. It'll come right into your inbox and it's five days a week. And it's a great way to start your day or end your day or have it midday. And everybody has 60 to 90 seconds to watch something inspirational. So if you go to YouTube, you can give that way by subscribing because it's free to do that. But YouTube will reward us as our ministry grows in various ways. So that's another way. So, um, and you know, Anthony, you've always been a giver. You, you're, 
you've been a proponent of ministry. Uh, well, we always encouraged all you kids to go on mission trips. And I know you did that a lot when you were younger. And I know um, I'm going to brag for a minute here. Anthony is graduating with a doctor in chiropractic. We're going to his graduation in, uh, on December 7th. We're actually driving up north, Northern California, December 6th for the graduation on the 7th. And he has worked hard. That's seven and a half years of college <laughs> once he's done. Right, Anthony? Actually, it'll be over eight years. Oh, over eight years. I was going to say, oh my no, gosh. that's... Are you eight, kidding? Eight, eight and a quarter. Eight, eight and a quarter years? Nope. Yes, yeah, it'll be eight, eight and a quarter. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that's a lot of schooling. Yeah. But, you know, you're you're doing what you were called to do, and I know that for a fact. And I also know that going back to the subject of giving, I know you're going to be giving a lot of what you do away as a doctor once you once you go in practice. I, I know that you've told me that you're going to continue to, to be a missionary and, and all of us have that opportunity. If we're doing what God's called us to do, we shouldn't be going to work and doing our job, right? We should be going <laughs> to our go calling to, mm -hmm, and fulfilling. fulfilling our destiny. And I'm just so proud, Anthony, of you that, you know, you've taken that commitment. You've done the hard work. Um, you know, you took your, you, you've taken this commitment of going back to school so seriously. You've done the hard work. And I know we talked earlier, like I said just a few minutes ago, we talked earlier about how when you know because you know that you're doing what God wants you to do. And for some people, it takes a lifetime. For some people, they never figure out what God wants them to do. And I have to say, and I said this earlier to you, I don't think I said it to dad, but Every, I feel like every one of our kids is doing what God's called them to do. I don't feel like anybody is really doing something that's like, oh, they just, they just work this job because that's just what they do. I feel like every single one of you is doing what you know God wants you to do. You're convinced of it. You're convicted. And uh, to be a healer, to be in the healing profession like you're entering into, I don't know what could be more noble, what could be more helpful what could be more beautiful than wanting to help people maintain wellness or in some cases help them restore their wellness through the power of God and through using your hands, your knowledge, your schooling, your healing power that comes through Jesus. I don't know what could be better. I mean, maybe what we do, we help heal people with our words, you know, so, <laughs> but uh, I'm proud of you, son. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it just feels right. I mean, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel like I'm doing anything above and beyond. It just feels like I'm mm -hmm. just doing what I'm supposed to do. And you, that, I, I, I have felt that from you since you've been on this path. Mm -hmm. And before you got on this path of going back to school and becoming a chiropractor, mm -hmm. you were, you were conflicted. Uh, you were just unsettled. You mm -hmm. just didn't know what to do and nothing felt right. And all of a sudden you said, I remember you coming and saying, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And when you told me what that was, I was dumbfounded. I'm going, wait a minute. This is the kid who said, I'm never going back to school again under any circumstances. Do you realize you have to go back to school for another three or four years or God only knows how long? And, uh, and, uh, you've excelled and, and, uh, so, so you're on, you're, you're clearly, uh, fulfilling your destiny and that is what, uh, you have been called to do. So thank you for calling Anthony and, and, uh, just for, yeah, of for being on this call today. We appreciate it. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. yeah. So Loving guys. Give our, my give our love, give our love to your bride and, um, I will. Yeah, please do. And have a good night. We will catch you later. And yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, it's son. It's been All right, a good thanks, giving thanks. Tuesday. Well, Dad, have, a, have a good one. Okay. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. All right, bye. So if you wish to participate and be a partner with us in ministry, reaching out to people around the globe in the most destitute places on planet Earth, we've been there. You heard Paul Murray a while back talking about the, the irks in, in Mongolia mm -hmm. uh, and 
and talking about the the people in North Korea and uh, and the list goes on. Uh, that's what we do. We reach the people where they where they need to uh, touch the most. Somebody so, just called in. That's so who do we have, have now? Hi. Who is it? It's, hey, hey, guys, it, it's Foster. Foster Freeze. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Foster Freeze. Oh, oh, Foster. Yeah, I, I, I just uh, was playing golf with the governor-elect of Florida, Ron Santos, today, and now we're at the... Uh, the meeting of all the new governors. There's like 27 Republican governors oh. meeting here in Phoenix, and I uh, cool. I slipped up right after dinner and missed, missed dessert, so I can congratulate you guys on your wonderful ministry. Thank you, Foster. Thank that you, means Foster. a lot that you took time out of your busy schedule to do that. Did you happen to hear the end of the conversation with Anthony? We just had Anthony on. You know Anthony, our youngest. No, no, I, no, I, I just I just logged on just, just now. now, and I, I, I just thought I'm so excited well, how much I enjoyed your ministry. Remember the time we were down together and you went through that whole list of all the things that we are in Christ. Do you remember yes. that one? Yes. 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 That's right. Yeah, that, you came that, to visit that, us that really, in, in Mexico. Mexico. Our, yeah. our mission in Mexico. Yeah. Hey, so so I I, I, I guess you got a couple more hours to go. I would love to I, I challenge all of your listeners that might be tuned in that I will match any donations they send in oh. the next two hours. Whoa. Uh, up to five thousand dollars. Wow! There you go. That is so huh. generous. That's very, very. Oh my gosh! Thoughtful. We have forty-five minutes Thank on you. here. So, okay, people, you heard that. Forty-five. Yeah, we've got that forty-five is so minutes generous. to raise five thousand so nice. dollars. Yes. And well, no, no, I, th I thought you. I, I thought you were going till a lot, lot longer. Nine. Than going that. Till twelve to nine. We started at twelve o'clock. Uh, Pacific time, and we're going till nine o'clock Pacific time. That's forty-five minutes more that we have. Oh, okay, so I, I thought I thought it was uh, I thought it was the other way around. So, but I'll tell I, you I, what, I, 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 we I, just I, might go an extra hour for this <laughs> extra five grand. Yeah. You know? Okay. All right. Well, well, let me know. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't call earlier, but I was meeting. I was no. meeting with uh, Governor Ricketts of Nebraska, and I met uh, Kemp, the new Georgia governor. So. Uh, this is a, I was one of the founders of this group. Well, I'll let you guys oh, get, thank get you. going so you can rouse out some more donors. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're fantastic, Foster. Yeah. Thank you. Great to God, talk to you. God God bless bless you. In. Okay. Talk, we'll talk bye -bye. soon. Bye-bye. 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 Wow, that was a surprise. That's awesome. That was a surprise. So if you want to make your dollars go twice as far yes, as you thought they one. would. Yeah. Uh, here's here's how you do it. You text RSM to three six zero three six zero. Yeah, exactly. Nine hundred thirteen thirty eight. Just text that number and then follow the prompts, and you can give that way, or just hit the donate button at the top of the Facebook page, and or you can send a donation to this address: Robert Schuler Ministries, twenty one twenty eight Bay Point Drive. Newport Beach, California, 92660. That's Robert Schuller Ministries, 2128 Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. And you told them they can hit the donate button at the top of Facebook. That was the I'm sorry. first thing I said. I was distracted. And remember that every dollar you donate will be duplicated by none other than Foster Freeze, our dear friend, uh, who is actually the chairman of the Brandywine Funds, and a wonderful, generous yeah. man. Who lives in Wyoming. Yeah. He's a friend, great from, man. From We've Wyoming. been friends with him for 25 years. We travel literally around the nation to, to pastor to people, the rich and the poor, uh, and we go everywhere we that God calls us. So we have another caller on yeah, the line. We have our fourth and second daughter. This will be our fourth child to call in, Christina. That's what you meant by our fourth and second daughter. Yeah, because uh, Angie fourth. called in. And she, you're not our fourth child, but you're the fourth one to call in. Angie called in earlier, then Bobby. Anthony just what, got off about 20 minutes ago, and now you. So you've made our day complete because all four of our children will have called in today with this call. So we appreciate it very much. 
Oh, well, for as much as you support us, it's the least we can do is call in and support you guys and Thank you. tell you how much you mean to us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you mean a lot to us, too, you and your kids. And, you know, we're so blessed. We um, Obviously, this is Giving Tuesday. And each person, each one of our kids, each of the three that have already spoken, just said a few words about what what does it mean to be a giver? What does giving mean? Um, you know, obviously, Bobby approached it as a pastor. Uh, Angie taught, and he also said that he was taught by us about the five, the 10 oranges and how we used to teach you have to give one of the oranges to God. That was really cute. And I, you know, Angie had a whole nother thing to say. And then Anthony, of course, talked about being a broke student right now. But I reminded him that you guys were always encouraged to go on mission trips and to give back. And you still do. So I don't know. What is what does giving mean to you, Christina? Um, I think giving just means, um, you know, giving giving back in any way that you can. And as you kind of touched upon, it's not always about money, but it can be about your time. It can be about your your goods or your gifts and your talents that God's given you. Um, and I think giving with a grateful heart is really important, too. Um, it's one of the ways that God um, has told us that we can test him in this. Um, and if we give with, with a grateful heart and we give, um, you know, our, what, what, whatever we have, whether it's a lot or a little bit, um, God will bless us. And he says, test me in this, um, that your cup will run over, that he will provide back to you tenfold. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a really great way, um, to really grow in your faith, um, I've seen that every time that I give, God, you know, undoubtedly always gives back a million times. And it's not about how much money you can give, because God doesn't need the money. But yeah, it's about exactly. changing your heart and your perspective um, on, on money. And when you release that to God, mm -hmm. he gives you more than you could ever thought possible. So I don't know if that answers your question. Very well. I kind of went on a little tan no, tangent it's good. there. But, it's uh, good. It, 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 no, it answered our question completely. And, you know, your pa Pastor Jordan was on a couple of hours ago now, and we asked him for a recap of that amazing sermon he gave on Sunday. And, and I told him, I said, <clears throat> I couldn't remember exactly what kind of really tugged at my heart. But then I was reminded, it's, it's the whole, uh oh, I don't know what's happening here. Just hang on a second. I'm ready. So um, well, the next caller will be with you in a second here. We're just finishing up with our daughter. But anyway, what, what, what was tugging on my heart all day when he was preaching that sermon on giving and using that widow's might as, a, as an illustration I, it's so funny as a child and even as an adult until that moment, I always thought that that illustration was about the fact that, oh my gosh, that woman gave above and beyond what she could. She gave the two mites, which are worth like one copper penny today. Right. But it really wasn't about that so much as it was more, it was a deeper message. It was about that woman's trust. The trust was I'm going to give all of this to God because I know I serve, I pray to, I believe in a God that's so much bigger than I am. And that's what I heard you just saying. It's a trust issue. It's not about, it's not about the money. It's about knowing who's in charge of our money. God is in charge. God yeah. owns everything. He owns everything. We think we own maybe our car or we think we might own our house if you own a house. And we don't own anything. We're borrowing things here on earth. And there's no better way than to test God and to show that you trust God than to just give. And, and I'm so happy and so proud that we raised four giving children. You're all adults now. You all give back, not just your money to your church, but you give back in what you were saying, important ways of giving of your time and serving others with the gifts that God's given to you. And then also the money of trusting that, this doesn't belong to me, Lord. And then I love also what Pastor Jordan said, your pastor said about God's math. Somehow God puts <laughs> together the mathematics of things that are yeah. beyond 
our, you know, the world we, we live in, beyond the three, third dimension, the three dimensional world we live in. It's not about, oh my gosh, we owe this much money and we only bring this much in everybody. It has nothing to do with it. The, the tough months where you think you can't make it. God's math is so much different because he's more powerful than anything. He can do stuff. We have to believe in the miracles of the Bible. They weren't just in biblical times. They have continued through centuries. And we can, God actually tells us, and people don't know this, we have the power of miracles within us because the Holy Spirit indwells within us. And God has given us that as his helper. And so we have the power to see miracles come true in our life. But somehow we just don't trust enough, you know? So that was Absolutely. talk about a tangent, man. What was that all about? We're getting tired. We're getting. <laughs> well, we have another. I think oh, that maybe Jonathan okay, on we, the line. Okay. We hey Christina, we love you and thank you for calling. And um, I love you guys too. Thanks for having me. Okay. okay. Love you. You know better. I'm proud of you. You guys are really on fire right now. Only forty minutes <laughs> left. So forty. We, we've only been on for eight yeah. hours and twenty minutes. Eight hours and twenty five minutes. We've okay. been doing this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Woo, going a little dingy. Okay. Catch We're you later. ready for our next bye -bye. caller. Bye, honey. All right. Bye, love guys. You. Love ya. Bye. Hello? Hi there. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Who do we have? Robert Donna. Yes. This is Jim Foy. This Jim is Jim Foy. Jim. Oh. Awesome. Love uh, you, Jim. I'm so glad you called. Thank you. Look, you're, you're welcome. Love you, too. I, I popped on earlier today. Uh, and I uh, thought, man, are they really going to make it nine hours? Yeah. <laughs> it's so great to see you guys still on. We are still I'm, I'm here. amazed. Oh, Melinda's <laughs> on watching. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she? She's uh, sitting here right next to me. We're sitting by the fireplace oh, here in okay. Arizona. Yeah, can you believe this? We have been doing this. We got up to use the facilities a couple of times. We've had yeah, water. We, once in a while. we had a little snack around 2 o'clock, but we've been sitting here for... Yeah. Almost nine Almost hours. Almost nine hours. I mean, it's getting a little punchy. And um, <laughs> so so I don't know if you heard, but Foster Freeze, a friend of ours, called and just said, hey, he wants to match any gifts up to $5,000. Isn't that cool? So anyone who wants to. I, I actually. You heard it? I, I actually did hear that. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, I was sitting here listening. I heard Angie and uh, I heard oh, Anthony terrific. and I heard. Oh yeah, good. Oh, um, I I did want to say I I love the fact that you're doing the whole church without walls. I mean, you've been talking about <laughs> that when we were back at the Christian Cathedral, That's and right. I'm so pleased that it seems to be coming true. I mean, the idea of reaching the world for Christ without without the brick and mortar of walls, and yeah. I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, Thank I, you. I we started. So I'm so glad you said that because. I tell people that, and I don't think they believe me <laughs> when I say I've been, I've had this vision for for a decade, for over a decade, mm -hmm. and um, I'm trying to think of when I first started talking about a church without walls. I want to say it was shortly after you you became my associate pastor at the Christ Cathedral, and uh, but uh, yeah, I, I I think it was. I think that's when you started talking about it. And it was a dream of yours to just reach the world for Christ and and not be constrained by by um, you know the, the traditional trappings of a church and, and just take that church worldwide and it's just so neat I get asked all the time by the way um, you know what are you doing and it's it's neat to be able to point people to the Facebook page and say you know this is what he's doing this is what he's up to so that yeah, people can what we do. <laughs> discover the ministry and and support it. So yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Jim. The, the other thing I wanted to say, by the way, the other thing is, is uh, Angie said earlier. She, she said, "You folks are, are the same way in front of the camera um, that you are behind the scenes." And I, as soon as she said that, I want to go. And I looked over at Linda and I said, "Exactly. Aww. They are the exact same way in front of the camera as they are behind the camera. Very positive, very giving people." And so. Um, I just, I just, I, I had to call in to say that. So thank you very, very well, much. Wow. Well, I just have fond memories of working with you, mm -hmm. and uh, 
and I, I just, I'm just honored that you would call and participate in this. Thank you so much. We've been asking people what, uh, what giving means to them because this is Giving Tuesday. And so how would you answer that question? Well, one of the things I heard earlier you, you say about going to visit uh, people and friends in the hospital and you try to do whatever you can, and I guess as a pastor uh, speaking uh, about another colleague, a friend of mine, a, another pastor, is that's what I see in, in giving is caring for people. And no matter what, no matter what uh, you're doing, I noticed you know, over the years, uh, you have cared for people. You want you want to be there for them. You want to be by their side. And so you are by um, our side, Lynn and I, and, and, and our kids. And 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 same with Donna. Um, you guys have always just reached out to people and blessed them and cared for them. And that's why I want to call in too and say and say I've seen that. I've witnessed that. And so to me, giving. Giving is just um, just being there for people, um, yeah. it's particularly when they're most in need. Yeah, that's so, really true. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, and I've seen it with the two of you, and and uh, I just want to say I really miss you. I really miss you a lot. Well, thank um, you. We miss scary. you too. Um, hopefully, we'll be back to Arizona and tell people who are listening that where your church is. I think it's in Gilbert. Is that right? Right. Right. We're on the we're on the east side of Phoenix, uh, in a suburb of Phoenix called Gilbert. And uh, I'm so sorry that we missed you I know. when you guys were here in Phoenix. I know. Well, so, yeah, we well, tried to connect and it just didn't matter. And what's the name of your church though? I wanna know the name. I forget. It's called uh, New Hope New Hope Community Church. Okay. Um, it's it's in Gilbert, Arizona. Great. So. Okay, so for those of you that are listening or hear this later when it's posted Make sure if you're in Phoenix, in that area, that you go see Pastor Jim Poit and his wife, Melinda. And this is a great couple that we, we had the pleasure and the joy of working with for at least for a few years, you know. And uh, yep. God, did yep. great, God did great things, and he planted a lot of seeds. And you know what? We're still doing what we do, right? All of us. Yeah. Right. It, it was so much fun to walk, you know, to work with you guys every day and see you guys every day. So I, it's one of the highlights of my life. Oh, oh that's, that's awesome. That's a nice thing to Thank say. You. Thank you. Thank you. And ours. Well, yeah, one of, the, yeah one of the highlights was that period working yep. with you as well. Absolutely. Yeah, those Without good a times. doubt. And uh, traveling together and everything else. So God bless you, Jim. Well, Thank blessings. You. Blessings to you, too, and, uh, and uh, I hope that you get some sleep after this. Oh, it's we will. Trust Absolutely. me, we're probably going to pass the light. You know what's bothering me? Because I have such sensitive eyes. I have such light eyes. The light is starting to bother me. We had the light, this area. Obviously, this is dark here, but the light is starting to get to me. I'd look a little funny if I put my computer glasses on, though. I think they're yellow or blue. I don't know what color lenses they are. They're kind of dark, but I might do so. Now, I'll make it. We have 30 oh, minutes yeah. to go. Yeah. 30 minutes. So thank you so well, much. Blessings to the two of you. Thank, thank you. you. And to you and Melinda you and the whole family. Okay. We love you guys. Okay. Okay. Love you too. Okay. okay. I know we have somebody else on the line oh, who do. wants to call in. Okay. Oh, we and do. Uh, we do. We got somebody thank there. You. Thank you. Jim. But um, I've got to take a minute and just let people know we have a $5,000 matching pledge. So if you Donate right now to this ministry, Robert Schuller Ministries, 2128 Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. Mm -hmm. Every dollar you give will be matched up to $5,000. And so if you can make a donation to support this ministry, you need to know how far this will go uh, and that it will make all the difference in the world. You can go to the donate button at the top of this page. And you can do that, or you can you can write a check and, and mail it to the, the address I gave you, or you can text this number, 360-900-1338, and in the text box put RSM, that stands for Robert Schuller Ministries, and then follow the prompts as they come forward. So those are the ways to give right now. And we have another guest on the line. And uh, I believe it's, is it Cheryl Ellison? Is that who it is? Yes, it is. Uh, yes, yes, I, yes. Cheryl, how are you doing? 
I am doing well. How are you guys doing? I know it's been a long We're day great. for you. We're great. Yeah, it's been, we've been on, what, uh, eight and a half hours. This is our eight and, a, eight and a half hours in. We have 30 minutes to go. We've been talking to friends all day. We've talked to a lot of pastors. We've gotten a lot of um, opinions and, and testimonies about what giving is all about. Each one of our kids is called in. Our oldest daughter, Angie, you know all of them, Cheryl. Bobby, of course, is still uh, who's a pastor. He's pastoring um, the Our Power. Um, our youngest, Christina, who you know, our youngest daughter, and then Anthony, who's finishing up graduate school and will be a doctor very, very soon. So all four of our kids called in, couldn't have made us prouder, talking about giving and talking about how they were brought up to give. And we talked a little bit about mission trips. And each of them had a little different slant on what it means to give. So I guess we can ask you, what, is it, what does it mean to give, to give back, to, you know, what it what what comes to your well, mind, or or what do you want to talk about? Well, what, what, that's what, what I'm putting you on the spot. What comes to my mind is is sometimes it's hard for mm -hmm. I think for all of us to to think about giving, but I know that for me and that when I do make that effort to give, um, I actually receive more in those moments than any time that I, you know, doing something for myself. Um, and uh, you, you both are have been wonderful um, examples and role models for me in terms of giving. You know, I mean, and there's just so many different ways that you can give. And certainly, it's important that you know that we all support you know ministries like yours financially. But I just know that the time and the the commitment and the love and that you give is. Um, is, is just tremendous. I thank you so much for what you've given to me and my family. Thank you, Cheryl. Well, you know, you you and Robert worked together. We all worked together for so long. For people that are on or just joining us, uh, Cheryl Ellison was the COO of Rancho Capistrano, worked with Robert for 13 years. Is that how long you worked together? 13 years? I think it was 15. Maybe it was a long time. That was a long time. It was a long time. <laughs> and, uh, but during that time, we built a church, a school, a retreat center, right. and we uh, we put together a bunch of stuff and uh, and uh, did a lot of ministry together. God was good. You yes. Know, and, you know, yes. But in, in the giving thing, I mean, you know, for those of us that have been in ministry, it's what it's about. It's what we're called to do. And in giving, it's one of the great paradoxes. Like, you, you talked about giving, and also you can use the same – Great paradox with time because you can give away time as well. But we serve a God who gives us so much more back. If we give something away, like I said, it's a great paradox that suddenly we have a lot more time. And the same with our money. Um, oftentimes we give money. We don't necessarily get more money back, but oftentimes we do. But we always, always get something back in return, just pressed down, shaking together and overflowing with with beautiful blessings that may come in the way of a healthier family. It may come in a better friendship with somebody you're struggling with. It comes in all kinds of ways because we serve a God that is a God of miracles. He's a God of restoration and renewal, and he wants the best for us always. And it's very clear in the Bible. And Bobby said this earlier, our son Bobby, who's the pastor, called in and said, you know, it's very clear in the Bible about giving. And if you don't believe what the Bible says about giving back, then you might as well just throw the whole thing away because you either believe it or you don't believe it. And so we have people on today calling that, that believe it. They believe Jesus. They believe in the great promises of God, and they're living their life out to that degree. And they will truly see the blessings of the Lord. And you'll see, you know, you'll see the kingdom of God here on earth today. It's not something lofty in our future. It's not something we're going to get to when we die. The kingdom of God is available through the Holy Spirit who indwells in those of us that have invited us into our lives and that practice and believe in the promises of God. So, you know, this is what we do. I mean, people, you know this, Cheryl, but a lot of people ask us, well, what do you do? You don't have a church anymore. We don't have a church building. Which and that's is, really hard for people to people, comprehend. Yeah, but we still that we do. Don't have a, that we right. have a church without walls. Exactly. <laughs> but this is full-time. This is not a hobby. Yeah. This is not part-time. 
this is something that God has called us to. And we get up every single morning and say, what do you want from us today, God? And at the end of the night, before we close our eyes and go to bed, we say, God, did we do what you were called to do today? And I have to say, most of the time, without a doubt, it's a 99% of the time. Absolutely, yes. yes. So you yeah. know what? Until God tells us, no, we don't want you doing this anymore. We don't want you in ministry. You know, this isn't effective or this is new or this is too bizarre. Until he tells us this is not for you, we're going to keep doing this and we're going to preach the good news and we're going to share hope and, and joy and the grace found in knowing Jesus with as many people as we can forever. Well, well Cheryl, yeah, thank you for Donna, calling in. One of the things, yeah. One of, well, if I could just say, respond to something that you said, and that is, is that, you know, with the Bible, Jesus spoke the, the, the language of the time so right. that people could hear the good word. And when you talk about a church without walls, I mean, you know, we are now deep into technology and, you know, communicating and working remotely and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, with one another online and, and, and so on is, is, is the language of our day now. So mm -hmm. that's where we're going to be able to reach people. And I certainly still love you know, and you, you guys know me well, I, I love to be sitting in the same room, you know, talking to someone, you know, directly, and and and, and I will always treasure those opportunities, right. but at the same time, that's, you know, our world has, ex, you know, expanded beyond that to the, the technology, and so that is a place where you're going to reach, uh, you know, the largest number of people, because that's where, you know, that's where, where, where we are. are. That's where people are yeah. today. Exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah. so that's where we're going to be. You know, I've often picked this up all day long on my cell phone. For those of you that are listening, can't see it. But this is where people are today. They are here in their darkest times, in that dark night of the soul where they're struggling with a cancer diagnosis, where they've just found out their child is a drug addict or where they've, they've, they've tried everything and that yet their marriage is still falling apart. What do they do? They pick up their computer, their cell phone, and they Google these words. And so we are where the people are. And that is in the dark night of the soul, hopefully when they Google something that we've written that has to do with putting Jesus at the center of that problem and, and, and pray for, prayerfully um, asking him into your life and asking him to help, help you get through anything, that's what we're doing. We call it felt needs evangelism through using Google. So we're writing and we're doing all these videos and we do it every single day. And uh, we thank you for your support, Cheryl. We thank you that you serve on our board, by the way, for many years now, besides being a friend. And uh, we love your whole family. We thank you for calling. Thank well, you, thank Cheryl. You so well, thank you. Yeah. And I love what you guys do. You just keep thank doing you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. And and uh -huh. we, we have another guest that I want to get to right away because our time is fleeting and he is an important guy and we've kept yes. him holding. And I, Nine I minutes feel, and 46 seconds. Oh, no. And I feel sorry we kept him holding so long. Sorry. But Jonathan. Pastor Jonathan. Thank you. Hi there. Hi. It's great, uh, great to get to talk to you both. And how are you doing? We are well. We are doing well. We are tired a little bit. I think we're a little more than tired. We're a little bit punchy. We're a little bit, I feel a little crazed with this bright light you, and being on here for nine hours. You, you're, you've come alive all of a sudden the last <laughs> hour. It's like, oh, man, she's, she's just getting going. I think her adrenaline just kicked in. And, uh, but uh, but we've, been, we've been doing this since noon today. And uh, without a break. Yeah. Well, we so can. well Shut the up. only break we do is we have to stop Facebook Live. We'll only let you go for four hours, so we had to take two breaks in a nine-hour period. So every three hours, uh, we we had to turn it off and then restart it, and that's been our break. So um, so that's it. So we've been going for nine hours, and I've just been calling all my friends and people I appreciate, admire, and respect, and. Uh, so that's why I invited you to come on here because of my sincere respect and admiration and love for you and uh, for your church. Um, and so I, I just want to thank you for, for coming and, and, and 
spending this time with us because you're the one who started me. You don't know this, but for, no, he doesn't know. unless unless you've been listening to seeing some of my posts, I've been doing a 90 day challenge. <laughs> and where do you, where do you think well, I suppose where do you suppose I got that from? And uh, I, can't, I, I can't I can't imagine. <laughs> Well, your 90-day challenge that I took back in, well, 2017, I believe, correct? Was that your campaign? Yep. Yes. I took that 90-day challenge, and um, it was life-transforming for me. I've just got to tell you. I actually called one of your lay pastors, one of your teachers, one of your pastors in your church, and um, gave her this whole verbal rundown. I, I actually thought I was calling uh, Kim bowling and I ended up calling Karen and left her like this 20 minute message on what God had done in my life because I I accepted this 90 day challenge and at the end of the recording I said and by the way this is Donna well thank goodness I said that because she called me or texted me back and she said by the way I think that was a wonderful testimony but I think you meant to call my mother so, but that was life changing to the point where Robert just heard me talk about this over and over. And he said, we're doing that this year with our ministry, with our online ministry. So, so I've been telling That's people all about the 90 day challenge. Well, I want to hear your version of the 90 day challenge. <laughs> well, uh, the 90 day challenge is basically a, uh, you know, uh, an, an invitation, really, to people to take God at his word. Um, That's what it is. In exactly. the book of Malachi, um, Malachi, God says, you know, um, you know, bring the tithe and, you know, into the storehouse and, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing that you won't be able to contain contain it. And and he, he, he asks us, he, God challenges us says try me now in this and to my knowledge it's the only place in the bible where we're allowed to test god or try god and he says if you try this and test this i will show you that my word is 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 true and i think um that's a it's it's a very powerful promise and it's one that um when people take the step and go okay i'm going to believe god i'm going to trust god they're consistently amazed at what God does because we're taking his word, we're applying it to our lives, and we're believing that the promises of God will come to pass. And, uh, and, and so that's where it, where, where it originates. But, but I've had people over and over again say, you know, I've been amazed. And the amazing thing is, and I think... Um, Cheryl, who was speaking previously, mentioned mm -hmm. this, that, you know, when you give, it doesn't just, it's, and, and, and I think you were saying this as well, Donna, it's not just that we give and then God gives back to us in kind financially, but it affects every area of our lives. And mm -hmm. I've seen seen people over and over again have come back and say it's, it's, it's helped in my, my relationships, it's God's opened doors, there's been opportunities that have come my way, uh, we've been happier. And it all comes out of that place of, of trusting God and, and, and trusting his word. It's exactly, it's a whole, the whole thing is a matter of trust, isn't it, Pastor? That I mean, yep. this isn't so much about uh, what we will or won't give. It's about, about trusting the promises. It's about trusting what is written in the Bible. It's about trusting and testing God and, and believing him before we have any proof that what's going to happen is actually going to happen. We just have to have trust. And that's why money, I think, is such a, man, it's such a, it's such a, it, 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 it has such a hold on so many people because we falsely think that we have control over our money. And we don't. We don't have yeah. control over anything. Nothing. God has control of everything. We're stewards, right? We don't own anything. No, we are just, we are just. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, God has God has blessed us with what we have for a period of time. And uh, like the old saying goes, nobody takes a U-Haul to heaven. So you, yep. can, you can have yeah. everything in the world, but you enter the world with nothing and you leave the world with nothing. And so, yeah. so I have been sharing the 90-day challenge throughout the month of March. 
this has been a March through the month through the month of November, and uh, I've been talking yep. about tithing and giving, and and uh, this is the culmination. And then I'm probably not going to talk about giving and tithing again until uh, next November, mm -hmm. because that's historically what I've always done is I just focus on giving and creating and encouraging people to make a pledge for the following year. So that's what we're doing. And uh, yep. so in the 90 day challenge, we're, I'm giving people their money back if they do not feel the blessings of God uh, as a result of this, of, of making a pledge. Gee, where'd he get that idea? Uh, I, I heard this pastor named Jonathan. Who Jonathan speaks, and Diane Wilson. Who, who speaks a little funny. <laughs> And uh, I was convicted and said, hey, that's the way to go. And uh, so that's what we're doing. So for people that are listening, I just want to, to let people who just joined us, because, you know, this is Facebook Live and people come on and off and on and off and on and off. And so I want to say that this is Pastor Jonathan Wilson. He and his wife, uh, Diane Wilson, actually co pastor a great church right up here on Jamboree in Newport Beach. It's called Newport Church. I have been attending the Bible study there called um, Sisterhood on Friday mornings. I did this when, when, when Pastor Di was actually teaching up at the Italian restaurant up at the top of Newport Coast, up by where you guys live. And so I well, think yeah. I've been in this Bible study off and on for, I want to say, maybe nine years. Nine years. I think it's actually maybe ten years. So uh, And I enjoy it, and I look well. forward to it, and I, I get... I get so much from listening to to you preach, from listening to your wife preach. Um, I, I I speak highly of you. I have so much respect for the both of you, so much love for you. You actually pastored us through a really difficult time um, when we first wow. left our ministry that we thought we'd never leave and, you know, um, out of our control. And that that's, you know, water under the bridge. And that was all part of God's plan. Now, I, I definitely believe that. But... You were, we listened to you preach on our very first Easter morning. And I know Diane remembers that. And she's, she and I have talked a little yes, bit. Yes, I about remember it. it too. Yeah, but we were so broken. And we were like, what? You know, what is going on, God? I mean, I can still kind of tear up thinking about that. It's one of those, it's one of those wounds that you know you're healed from, but it still was so, so deep that every once in a while the pain kind of, can still kind of ooze out once in a while in, in weird and in, in unpredictable ways. But I just want to say that you, through your amazing ministry at Newport Church, you and, and, and Diane Bo, Pastor Diane and Pastor, Pastor Jonathan Wilson from Newport Church, have been incredible uh, support system for us. And, and, and I think that's important for you to know. You'll, you'll never know how much you helped us through such a difficult time. So we thank you. Well, thank you. Um, we, it's, it's wonderful to hear that because we've always wanted our church to be a, a safe place where people can come and, you know, people go through all sorts of situations mm -hmm. and circumstances in life, unexpected things happen. I mean, I guess you would have never imagined being in that position yeah. and, and you were able to find a place where you could sit and, and, and experience the presence of God hear the word of God and and begin to heal and, and get some focus and direction for your future. And so we're very privileged. I, I We feel privileged that we could be a part of your journey and be of some help to you at that time and that season. And I want to say that you both have been a great encouragement to us over the years, your your involvement in, in our church and being a part of it and being a part of a greater world and a greater ministry and you know that has have lived in this area all your lives and for us newcomers in a way we're you know we've been greatly blessed by your leadership and your encouragement so thank you for that as well thank you thank you Jonathan. well, well thank you jonathan and um, uh, i just want to reiterate what donna said that uh it was really hard for us to go back into a brick and mortar church when we left the Twist cathedral and I think you were the one of the first churches, if not the first mm -hmm. church we actually went to. And it was a place for yeah. us to, to, to feel some healing and to begin to, and to feel safe. To you feel know? safe. We didn't so. feel safe anywhere because we were, 
we were, it was so public everything and we're not going to go down that road but just to say that it was yeah. it was we we heard the word of god but it was in a safe environment you know people didn't come up and say weird things to us and like they did in some other churches that um you know it's just the way of the world it's just the way it is but we were very safe and you provided that safe environment you and and god and through the holy spirit just just helped us heal helped us so heal. So thank you for, for that. Thank you for your 90-day challenge yes. that we've adopted. Uh, thank you for your spirit. And uh, so uh, this has been a long day for us. We're almost at an end. So I think I'm going to say good night to you. And then we're going to sign off here in a minute. And We're going to uh, tell people how they can it? give one more time. Yeah, and, it's almost uh, 9 o'clock. So. Okay. Yes. I know you've had a long day right. as well, so thank you for, for taking the time thank to, to yes. call tonight. I really, well, really well, appreciate it. We do appreciate you. We, well, thank you. We love you and every blessing. Thank we you. Love we'll you see too. you soon. We'll see you very soon. See ya. Probably this weekend. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, so, so I think we're going to wrap this up here pretty quick. Let I don't know just... if Merritt's still on there, but uh, well, my friend Merritt, was on and she's the one that was asking how do you My give phone? No, she was on here and i was kind of messaging her and she's on there got it go god go god the people go i love it i love it so so hey we have been on here since since noon we have this would be our third posting if you look you'll see two others that have been posted part one and part two one and part and two and this is part three <laughs> And uh, each one is, if you just look at the pictures that are posted there, they all look the same, probably. Uh, we haven't and, changed. We've been like this but, all day. <laughs> but we have had, I'll guess we've had 30, 30, 30 different guests call in. Mm -hmm. Amazing pastors and leaders and, mm -hmm. and uh, wonderful people. And, and the, one of the last calls we had, he said, it was a, it was a dear friend and support of this ministry. He says, I'm going to match every person's gift up to $5,000 that donates to this ministry. So the first $5,000 that are donated to this ministry, it doubles. You're no longer giving a dollar every time you give a dollar. You're giving two. And um, so that makes this ministry even more lucrative as far as the ability for us to be able to reach people on a dollar. So, so if, if you want to, to, to support a church, a ministry that is reaching people, this is the place to do it. And the way to do it is you can simply hit the donate button at the top of this Facebook page. If that doesn't feel comfortable to you and you like the idea of writing a check and mail it in, you can do that too. You can mail it to this address. It's Robert Schuler Ministries, 2128 Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. And again, it is Robert Schuler Ministries, 2128 Bay Point Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. And if you like text giving, a lot of people <laughs> like text giving. There it is. You text this number, 360-900-1338. And you text the message RSM. That stands for? Robert Schuler Ministries. Yeah, Robert Schuler Ministries. You just text it to this number, 360-900-1338. And if you want to talk to us because or send us a text message, uh, or a, or a uh, uh, send us an email because you're not you're not a, uh, able to make a donation at this time, but uh, you want to plan on making a, a pledge. pledge for the future. Mm -hmm. Here's our text. Here's our email addresses. Robert at schulerministries.org. Does it matter? Yeah, I was saying we. Yeah. And Donna at schulerministries.org. So those are our email addresses, so we can communicate that way. We can text. Uh, we're available here to, to, to minister in any possible way. Do we have somebody else on the call here? Mm -mm. No. Oh, okay. So Jonathan hasn't hung up yet. Uh, that's, that's cool. Thank you. 
for listening, Jonathan. So, uh, hey, it's been a it's been a long day uh, it's for been Donna. A nine and I. hour day sitting it's here. Been <laughs> fabulous. It's been amazing. We've I, been so blessed by. I think we should do this every day. No, probably not. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm hyperactive for those of you that know me. And this has been really tough for me to sit. I mean, I'm just like, go, 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 go. I cannot sit. So this has been really good. This has been a lesson in patience for me. Patience <laughs> and an endurance. Endurance and, yeah. And I, I think the most appropriate way to close this time out is with prayer. Absolutely. Because again, if you can't make a financial donation, um, there's other donations you can make which are every bit as valuable. There's nothing more valuable than prayer. Mm -hmm. So please pray for this ministry and to keep us in your prayers as we continue to travel the world, as we continue to share the good news of, of Jesus with the world, uh, that will raise the funds we need to be able to continue our ministry. Uh, that's the first thing you can do and the most important thing you can do. In addition to that, you can share, find one of our our memes. That's what those posts or pages are called, memes, and share one of those or one of our videos. All available <clears throat> on our Facebook, Robert Schuler Ministries, or on YouTube. Not the memes aren't there, but all the videos are on Robert Schuler Ministries YouTube. So, can they can they sh share one of our the uh, pod one of the posts that you have online on the rock duck on the DuckShuler.org, is that something oh, you mean that's all, share, that's all of our right? uh, Oh, all of our written blogs, which all are, for those blogs. of you that don't know what a blog is, it's basically an essay. So we have essays or blogs that go out five days a week. Those are our felt needs uh, evangelism, we're calling it. Those are where we reach people where they are, when they need it. Uh, tough subjects like suicide, divorce, um, you know, a death in the family, grieving, um, disease, um, uh, cancer diagnosis. I mean, these are the things we write about every day. So we call them felt needs evangelism because we are going where people are. When they pick up their computer after they've had a diagnosis and they're so down in the dumps and they're so scared, what do they do? They Google, they Google cancer. So we want to be a, a first resource out there for these really difficult things that people experience in life. We all do from time to time. We don't know when but all of us do. So that's one of the things we do. That's the kind of evangelism we do. And with our Google grant, uh, that makes it possible for us to reach people and it's, it's growing exponentially. Since September, we have quadrupled our reach and uh, we expect by the end of 2019 to reach over a million people because of everything combined and working together because of your prayers, because of the need, because of the the diligence that that we're committed to. Yeah, and we again, just need the finances to keep going because clearly, you know, we 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 have to raise money to to fund these projects. So for 2019, our budget is 214 thousand, and for that 400 214 thousand, we will actually produce. Let me get the exact number: 324 videos. Uh, we will travel around the world. Uh, we already have our, we already have our plans for Korea in in, February. in February the fe end of February, the first part of March. We'll be going to DC in the first part of February, and that's just what we know right now. So this two hundred fourteen thousand dollars includes all of our travel to to share the good news of Jesus around the world, and. Uh, it's only made possible because of our friends and supporters like you and the donations that you have been called to make. And so we thank you. And again, I just noticed a couple new people who just came on. We're finishing nine hours. Here. And yeah, we're finishing up. But I just want to let you know that if you make a donation now, yeah. uh, we had a matching pledge that of uh, $5,000. So up to the first $5,000, will be matched we have a matching gift and uh so again thank you so much for everything thank you for participating uh we've 
we have exceeded our time. So let's end with prayer. So it's time to pray. We're going to end with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, you have given Don and I the, the, the strength to, to do this, that our voices haven't given out. Uh, neither one of us are hoarse, uh, that we've, we've, we've been uh, responsive to your call to do this. And so we have planted this seed. And so, oh Lord, may it, this seed produce a harvest, a harvest of lives and souls for you. And so we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have and for the friends that we have around the world who, are, who, who just have a heart for other people and on this Giving Tuesday have chosen to give. And so we thank you, Lord, for everything. And we praise your name always. Amen and amen. Amen. God is blessing you, everybody, in all ways and through all things. He is blessing you. Remember that. Yeah. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace. And you're lying down and you're rising up and you're laboring and you're leisure in your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. And amen. God bless you, everybody. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.